Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trusty Huckster Mercantile's uh, Trusty's Vintage. No, not tonight's not the deep dive. Tonight's the live sale. Trusty's Vintage Live Sale. I'd be very lonely if I was doing a deep dive because I've got nobody here to deep dive with me. So we've got a couple early birds tonight. We've got a Retro Curio, Retro Curio Emporium. Somebody whose name is just as hard to say as mine, so I always welcome that. Thank you for joining me again. Hey, Karen. Oh, Connie Cable's back. Hey, Karen. Hi, Connie. Uh, we've got the, uh, back in the background, I'll, I'll announce, we actually did have uh, a winner for the auction on eBay for our llamas. There was quite the bidding war at the end. So it's, and I was very happy that it went to one of the viewers. So very excited about that. Hi, Hamlock lady. Uh, and Laura Bemos is here. Hopefully Laura Bemos, I know she's got something very exciting to share with us uh, for when she does her deep dive. So I've got a couple coming up before, actually, no, I've got one, two, three coming up before her. She is at the end of, no, no, no. Oh, you're the end of this month, aren't you? I'm so confused. Sorry, Laura. So I've got one coming up Sunday and then Laura's is at the end of the month. So hers is July 26th. So I've got Laura's is uh, gonna be doing dominoes uh, for her deep dive. I do vintage clothing on Sunday. So really looking forward to that. Uh, Joanne, welcome back, Joanne Peterman. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Lynn, happy to have you here. And Karen's from the West Coast. Let's see how much of glass she can buy for me this week and see if I break it. Uh, but love to always love having Karen with us. La Anders, thank you so much for joining us again. I don't think you were able to pick up anything last week, but I'm happy to have you in the chat. Hope you're having fun. And hey, Stephanie, thanks for joining us. I hope your sale, I'm sorry, I missed your sale earlier this week. Um, but I know Stephanie is doing weekly sales on Tuesdays. So if you're not subscribing to Thrifting Adventures, make sure you check out Stephanie. And she's planning a, it's not really a surprise one, but kind of a bonus one coming up uh, on uh, clothing. So she's gonna have a clothing sale, which was really popular the last time she did it. So once she sets on that date, uh, we'll make sure that everyone is aware of that. Hey, Harry Humstone's joining us. Uh, welcome, welcome, Harry. So still gotta check out all those salt sellers you had available. Uh, Joanne Baber, welcome back, Joanne. And uh, Teresa, thanks for joining again, Teresa. Uh, you know what, Stephanie, I realized I was watching Michelle did her, uh, Comfy Cozy Living did her Christmas show today, and she had pink tinsel and she was decorated. And I'm looking down going, yeah, I'm not changing shirts. So we're just gonna say that these are the, they're the festive Christmas dragons. So this is, uh, this is my Christmas attire. Um, I should have thought more about it and should have dug out. I, I think I do have a Santa hat, but it's somewhere with my personal Christmas stuff. And I don't really think there's anything I can wear for all this stuff that I'm gonna be selling. So you just get the, you get the blue dragons and you know, it'll make you think of Christmas come December. Uh, Mama J, welcome back. Anchor and Pearl Treasures, excellent. Uh, hey Lisa. Hey Vinny, Vinny's joining us. Hey Vintage Vinny, hope you uh, hopefully you can settle in. Yeah, I don't think you're a big drinker, but you know, have a drink, at least relax, have a Diet Coke, whatever. Uh, I know you're you're stressing. Working retail is just no fun, and working retail in COVID has got to be just a nightmare. So welcome, uh, welcome to the sale, Vinny. Uh, we, uh, Humpty Dumpty, and uh, used you, oh that. She used to be P. All right, so P is back. She is now Humpty Dumpty. Oh, Pam's here with Kibi's Collectibles. I, I do have dogs. I have dogs tonight. Christmas dogs. Uh, at least one. No, I've got two. I don't. I don't know if I've got anything that you've got, Pam. But you know, I always love dogs. I have cats tonight too, though, because everyone who complained about me not having cats the last time, I've got cats. Uh, oh, my vintage. Hey, Kim and Kim Zap. We've got two Kims right in a row. Oh, and we've got the Dachshund lady herself, Dawn Shankweiler, is joining us. She saw that Doxy towel and she is going to be fighting every one of you tooth and nail to get it. Um, and Barb is waiting uh, for a baseball game, <laughs> watching on the way to baseball. Well, good luck to your son. Hope he has a good game. We've got really bad storms coming through here. Uh, must be just northern Illinois, though. So you must be uh, in the clear if you're going to a baseball game. Uh, all right, we are right at seven o'clock at the top of the hour. So we're gonna see how many people uh, join in. But for those of you who did join on time, don't wanna punish you. Uh, hey, Suzanne, thanks for joining again. Hope you had a good vacation last week. And Connie, oh, Katie's here. Dogs rule, cats rule. Amen, Katie. Give a big sloppy kiss to Louie for us. Uh, we started something new last week um, because I just am starting to tip my toes in the water of eBay. And so off in the, in the back corner here, we've got the little mama llama and her baby llama, the llama planter, the D-import, D&B imports planter. 
didn't sell this in the live sale last week because I decided to put it up on uh, eBay auction. And uh, it, be, it turned into a popular item. I don't see if she's joined tonight yet, uh, but actually one of our viewers uh, did actually win it. There was a little bit of a bidding war at the very end, uh, but uh, we did end up selling the llama planter and that is going to uh, Randy Heilman. So when she joins, uh, if she's not already on, you can all verbally attack her because I have no way of knowing who the underbidders were, but I do know that if you've never sold on eBay before or on eBay before, there's a little app and I'm not used to it. So I'm like, what, what's, what's that sound? Every time you get a bid, you get, if, you're, if your sound is on, you actually hear that there's a bid. And the last five minutes of the auction, all of a sudden it was like, ping, ping, ping. I, was kept, I kept hearing it. So there was a little bit of arguing going on trying to get that, uh, get that llama planner. So congratulations to Randy. Uh, hopefully if she's joining us tonight, I'll be able to combine shipping and uh, combine ship the llamas along with anything else she gets tonight. And Louie says hello back. Yay, Louie, get a big kiss back for us. All right. Uh, for those of you, most of the names I'm recognizing, I think one or two popped in that I didn't know. So just a really quick summary. If you are new uh, to my channel, this works basically the way most of the other channels do. I will be showing you an item. I will describe the item. I will give you the price for that item. If you want that item, be the first person to put the uh, number that I announce in the chat. And the Huckster Helper is here with me in the room tonight. And so she will be monitoring the chat. The first person uh, she sees in the chat, hey, Michelle. Uh, the first person she sees in the chat is the person who will claim that item. Uh, you guys might have some luck tonight because I've got some competition for viewers. Uh, as a couple of you are saying in the chat, uh, you've got, oh, Linda's new. Hey, Linda Punky. Um, there's some competition of a very large channel is doing her sale. She doesn't do them regularly, but she chose her sale to be the exact same time as mine. What you gonna do? And uh, Crazy Lamp Lady, whose channel is just massive, uh, was doing, a, I think, a, maybe a live haul video I watched briefly. Um, but she doesn't usually go much longer than an hour. So you might have some people trickling in. And, uh, you know, but for right now, I've got a really nice number, you know, 54. I've got nothing to compare, comp uh, complain about. And we got some newbies. Got uh, Vicki Haney, Pete's Repeats. Uh, fantastic. Juanita, uh, excellent. So glad all of you guys are joining. Fatbird Finds is here, so therefore the party can begin. So we've got quite a bit of, of Christmas, mostly vintage, uh, a couple things, and I'll highlight the things that you know, aren't necessarily vintagey, but all Christmas. And then for those of you who've been with me before, it is the return of Trusty's Bargain Bin. So the Bargain Bin uh, will be at the end of the sale. Everything in the bin is $2. There's going to be another grab bag, and I will give you a hint or a sneak peek. The grab bag, uh, the first item in the grab bag for Trusty's Bargain Bin is going to be shiny bright ornaments. Vintage shiny brights with the metal caps that say shiny bright, say made in USA. So these are the vintage ones. Those will be available as a grab bag style, two bucks a pop. So we'll go through that when we do the uh, bargain bin. But for now, we'll get started with something that probably isn't vintage totally, but probably has a little bit of age to it. It's this pair of clear glass vin uh, Santa containers. I'm going to assume at one point these were jars because you can see there's a lip on this one. So I'm going to assume at some point this was a jar that maybe did have a screw top. I'm not sure if it had a screw top because there's no threads. So maybe it had, it's flat. So maybe it had a foil seal like it was a candy container. I don't recognize, and they're not labeled in any way other than USA, of what these originally were. So unfortunately, I don't know the age. They're really nice. They're just pressed glass. There's a seam that runs down the side. Uh, but the fact that they're made in the USA, in addition uh, to their just general appearance, I would say puts them probably in the 20 to 30, 30 year range. But regardless, I'm not going to guarantee that. But it's a pair. They're in perfect condition. There's no chips, no cracks. Like I said, there's a seam down the side, but that's the way they were designed. You get both of them for $6 by giving me number 43. So number 43 is the pair of clear glass Santa containers for $6 number 43. Go to something that is definitely vintage. So if you've watched my channel before and Barb's heard this a lot, um, I basically learned about Lefton 
uh, from watching uh, Real Nifty Vintage. I'd never even heard the word until I started watching his videos. And because he talked so much about it, uh, I decided, I thought, well, lift, Lefton is something I'm supposed to do. So I went on this buying binge of trying to find Lefton pieces. So I've sold several of these in the sales uh, to date. And this one is a really cute, uh, small pitcher and bowl set, but it has the Christmas theme to it. So it's got the Christmas tree on the side. On the back, it's got the candle with the little sprigs and the bell. So it's, it's decorated on both front and back. It has the original foil sticker showing left in Japan. And then the underplate, the little bowl that goes with it, also has the same tree and the same left in sticker. So it's just a really sweet vintage Japan porcelain left in piece. And he's available for only eight bucks. Eight dollars for the left in bowl and pitcher. They're giving me number 33. 33 for the bowl and pitcher from Lefton. All right. One of the dog ornaments or dog items that I have tonight is actually an ornament. And uh, this is, I think, a beagle. I think. But I wouldn't swear to it. A lot of the times I have a hard time figuring out the the style of dog. So he's got the little dog bowl. He's just resin. So again, probably not super vintage. Um, he's fairly well, in my opinion, fairly well painted with some very nice detail on the snout and the, you know, everything's within the lines and all that stuff. And he's got a really nice coloration and the blue bowl. Just, in a, you know, inexpensive little ornament and uh, didn't want to do too many ornaments Specifically, so I tried to do a little variety, but I'll start out with that one. So the beagle, or at least the dog ornament, is $4. And you can have him for giving me number 54. Number 54 for $4 for the little resin dog ornament. All right. This piece is also going into vintage territory, but probably in that, you know, maybe 20 year range. This is a piece, and this is a, a name that I was not familiar with. It's uh, Joan Baker Designs. So I don't know if people are familiar with that. It, it is made in China, uh, but it's got the date right on there. It's 2002. And it's part, it's basically, it looks like it's designed to look like stained glass. So if you look at the front, you can see that there's dimensions in here. So they put, they did the nice little lines in between all of the leaves, on um, the ornaments, all the individual pieces have the individual lines and then they're colored within it. But when you flip it to the back, you can see it's completely flat. So it looks like stained glass, but clearly is not. So I do believe the painting is done on the glass that I, the, the paint, the glass itself was not, um, it wasn't formed with those colors. It was painted on. So is what I'm trying to say. It does say it is hand painted. So I think like all of those ornaments, all those individual pieces, they all have it. When I did some research on this, this Joan Baker designs came up quite a bit. It was just something that I wasn't familiar with. Um, so anyway, thought it was really uh, attractive. It's got the little chain right on there uh so you can hold it i say theoretically it would be in a window so you could get the light coming through it uh but even just hanging from a regular ornament hook would look kind of cool as well so this is the joan baker designs glass piece it's available for only seven bucks seven dollars giving me number 24. number 24 seven dollars for the joan baker designs piece Oh, so Pam, you did used to have a, be a beagle. Oh, I'm sorry, you, you lost her. But um, I'm, you know, then I'm happy. Hopefully, it's good memories and showing you a beagle did not just traumatize you. So the uh, going, drifting along Etsy lines of, of uh, vintage, I'm now jumping into true vintage. This is one of the sets of glass ornaments. So you have to bear with me as I pull these all out. Give you a little bit of backstory. Uh, if you've been watching my um, Facebook or my Instagram and Facebook posts this week, I've been promoting the sale. 
almost entirely be, I wanted to promote it anyway, but I also knew I was going to be competing with Nicole North Garden. So I was really trying to show that I was going to have some cool stuff. And one of the things that I had access to was an estate uh, that I was helping price out. And so these are pieces that I did not, these are not mine. I'm selling these on behalf of a friend, but there is an entire collection of shiny brights, German man, uh, made glass ornaments. So like pre-war ornaments, uh, just a great variety of ornaments. And I don't think she's on here tonight, but uh, Rachel from Superior Girl Vintage helped me immensely uh, trying to figure out how to price all of these. So what this box is, and I'm gonna try and take them out one at a time so I can show you. What this box is a box of the glass indents. So they're, they're called the indents. These are all single indents. So it's a collection of eight ornaments. These two are unmarked, so these have no marking on the hook like on the top like the other ones do, but they're clearly indents. They're decorated on all sides. You can see the design on both of them. This one's got, you know, the little glitter design to go with it, and they've got the foil interiors to make, you know, that indentation. You can see, like from a profile, it's flat because it's it's been blown molded into the center. So these two are unmarked, so you get those two. Plus this one is the smallest of the set. This one is actually marked Japan. So it actually says Japan uh, in that on that top piece. And then there are four absolutely gorgeous vintage Poland, or I'm sorry, five vintage Poland pieces. So we've got this end indent that has the little point on the end. These are similar. They've got the uh, stripes painted on the back with glitter in between each of the stripes. And you can see the indents in both of these. These are the pinks. Actually, most of them have the pinks in them. This is the largest of them. This one is the slightly larger ball, but then there's no uh, point on the bottom, but it also has the glitter on the back. And then we've got two of the smaller ones that these indents I thought were really interesting. If you, I don't know if you can tell, they go really far in. So these seem to be less detailed in the middle because they're a little bit smaller, but they actually had the most se severe indentation. And then they both have the points on the bottom as well. Uh, they're none of them, although that one I thought did, none of them have chips or cracks. They're in great condition. Uh, they are as a set of eight. So you get all eight of these and I will package them within into their lives to make sure they actually make it. I'll probably double box everything. But you get the entire box of eight for only for 20 bucks. So that's the five Polish, the one Japan, and then the two that are unmarked. $20 for all eight indents by giving me number 53. So 53 gets you the box of all of the indents. Reclaim treasures by Mary is the ultimate packing breakables challenge. Y'all have to, oh, okay. Yeah, I insure everything. So I always protect myself, but I do find it, I find myself being super sensitive when, uh, because I do all these unboxing videos and I'm like analyzing how everyone else packages, but just ask Karen Dondelinger. She said two claims, actually maybe even three. I think she said two claims. The second one, the post office doesn't even want to honor because she, they think we're in some sort of cahoots. Um, but uh, so anyway, I'm not sure if I'm keeping track of uh, selling, but number 33 was the left in pitcher and bowl that went to Karen Radford. I thought more things than that sold. Is that it? Okay, I guess we don't have a lot of activity tonight. All right, so maybe we're not all in the Christmas mood. Anyway, let's move into something less expensive. Uh, let's see, 53 was the single indent set. That went to Mimi's Treasure Cottage. Thanks, thank you. Okay, and your name's not Mimi. It is Cindy. Uh, so thank you, Cindy, for picking those up. And those will be the first of uh, many sets. Those are the only indents, um, but we'll be talking about some other ones. This pair I picked up on the trip when I went down to see um, when I went down to see George and Fatbird Finds. This pair of uh, salt and pepper shakers I actually picked up at Fatbird Finds' store. Um, Laura's mom has a store in Paducah called Layman's, and it's a mix. There's a lot of great antique pieces, some great vintage pieces, and then there are these two, which I just thought were adorable. And when I picked them up, I didn't even realize that they actually have Christmas wreaths around their neck. So I didn't even realize that they were holiday. Now, Jeffrey questioned whether there was any age to these. And that's a valid question. They're not marked. 
One of them has a stopper, but the stopper is plastic. But if you get a replacement stopper, you're most likely going to get plastic too. Um, so this is a pair of salt and pepper shakers in absolutely perfect condition. They are from the home of Fat Bird Finds, uh, but you can have them in your home for five bucks. And for five dollars, you get it for giving me number twenty-three, where twenty-three gets a little Christmas uh, deer. They're not reindeer because they don't. I, well, I don't think they're reindeer. They don't have antlers. Um, but for the little Christmas deer in the kind of the drip glaze, five dollars for number twenty-three. Hey, Misty. I hope Maybelle's doing well. She's a cutie. All right, this is a piece that has uh, moderate uh, vintage-ish to it. This uh, I've shown on my Instagram, and I actually had this in a haul of video as well. Uh, this piece is marked Rosanna, uh, which they continue to manufacture. Their stuff now is made in China. Uh, so this does predate that going to the made in Italy era. It's... <sighs> I honestly don't know if this was designed to be an actual meal, you know, piece that is like a cereal bowl because it does have a gold trim to it because it's so deep. It might be more designed as a candy bowl. It could hold Jeffrey's ice cream. I'm not sure if this is part of like a, 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 a dinnerware set or if this is designed to be a decorative piece, but it's got this really nice footed uh, you know, kind of a foot to it. So it sits up really nice and it is a good size bowl. It's in perfect condition. The gold is actually in really good condition and that stocking design goes all the way around it. So it's very cool. Um, picked it up for a decent price. So I'm passing it on for six bucks. You can get it for $6 for giving me number 39. 39, $6 for the Rosanna uh, Italy stocking bowl. All right, fell behind in the chat. Um, so replacement stoppers. Somebody was just talking about in one of their channels, I think it was Kelly from uh, Moss Stone Story, that if you go to Michael's, and you probably could go to Hobby Lobby if you have them, but if you go to Michael's, that she said a lot of times the, the store people don't even realize they have them, that they're available in the sand art aisle which I will admit, I never would have thought to go. But since you're typically filling bottles with sand, that they had, they sell the bags of stoppers. Some of them small, some of them large. Um, so you can get kind of a mixed bag. I picked up a bag from Amazon. All I can say on that is they were very inexpensive, including the, and I, I, Amazon Prime. But I would just say be very careful of the um, sizes that you get because I thought I was buying the small ones and when I, they showed up, they were like wine bottles, corks. They were huge. So I still have them, but, uh, but they do have them on uh, Amazon and they're not that expensive. Now I've talked to Misty at Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, uh, just kind of in general. And a lot of people at this point aren't really always using the salt and pepper shakers. So a lot of people don't necessarily care that they don't have the stoppers. You know, you always want to say, you know, it does or it doesn't. But I, because of that, I've not really gone out of my way to find replacement stoppers, but we'll see. Um, you know, if, if I, I don't, I've sold a handful of salt and pepper shakers and a lot of them didn't have their stoppers and they sold. So, but if you want them, Michael's is a good, is according to uh, Kelly anyway, Michael's is a good place and it makes sense. You just have to know where to look and it's in the sand art aisle. All right, so I've got some Christmas textiles. This one is a little bit of a mystery, admittedly. It is a sheer piece. You can see it has like kind of like the old fashioned um, lantern with and bells with the holly and berries and everything on it. And then there's this great little ribbon that runs along the bottom and there's kind of a, there's a nice red trim. And then it goes to the other side, which is like the pine cones and the ribbons and the bells. And so it's clearly a Christmas piece. But what I don't know is it the Christmas piece of what? It has the holes at the top, which makes me believe it is a curtain. Like maybe it was a cafe curtain that that would be where the rod would go. But it also comes with this fairly long cord that goes along with it that maybe like in a normal case, you have a curtain with a cord like this, you would think it would be tied back, but there's nothing, it's not very long. So if you try to tie it back, you'd lose the design. But who somebody, somebody just said it, Pete's repeats is exactly what I was wondering is it's 
you would have to be a fairly thin woman or man to be able to wear this as the belt, but you could then put this as your belt, slide it around through there, and as you bunched it up, it would be your apron. So that is also my guess. I think it's an apron. Uh, Stephanie, who does a lot with textiles, she is also saying it's an apron, so that makes me feel a little bit better. It is very wide as an apron. So I don't know, like if you gathered it, how much of the detail you would lose. But regardless, it's in it's in really nice shape. There's really there's you know there's a little bit of roughness on the edges, right? It's not unraveling. It's just you know it's it's showing some wear. There's a couple places in where the holes were that have been torn a little bit. That was also what was making me think of this with a curtain that that was, you know, pulled on. And there was, as I held it up into the light, you may not be able to see it, but there's a tiny bit of discoloration right there, which I, a lot of people have had some luck with OxyClean, but clearly a vintage piece, clearly something that's not being made anymore, but it's very cool. And I picked that up. Actually, the same place that got the uh, that I have all the glass ornaments from, and I'm passing it on for eight dollars. So eight dollars for the apron slash valance. That Carolina princess of valance would make sense too. Then the the cord was doesn't. Uh, anyway, eight dollars. And no, I'm not modeling it. Uh, number nineteen. Eight dollars. Number nineteen for the red and white textile Christmas textile. All right, we're gonna stay in the kitchen for a little bit. And we've got a Christmas Santa mug. And what's special about this Santa mug, it is very German. It has the Bavarian uh, shield on it. It says München, so Munich. It has what I think is the Brandenburg Gate, which is not in Munich, but, you know, so we've got Berlin. Uh, we've got the Santa with those square spectacles. And then it, those two towers are on a church in Munich. Uh, they were under construction when I was there, but I do recognize them. And it's fairly modern because on the bottom, written in German, it does have a website. So again, we're not in the vintage territory, but it's a very cool mug. It is uh, 0.2 liters. It says right there. I'm not sure what the KO stands for. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, and then the CE is like the contemporary. That's uh, something for the safety features of Europe. I don't remember what those are. But anyway, it is a... Coffee mug, five bucks, five dollars for the coffee mug, number 49, five dollars for German Santa. And he's got a little, you've got the Santa on the inside. So when you're drinking, he can keep you company. Five dollars, number 49 for the Santa mug. All right. We're going to stay in Europe for a second because this is a piece that I picked up that I absolutely loved, but I'm not 100% sure where it's from. I believe it's Eastern European. It's one of those dough ornaments. And I have uh, an ornament that I picked up when I was in Slovakia that has that same blue and white uh, fabric background. Does not mean that this is Czech or from Slovakia. Uh, it's just, I think it is Eastern European. It has a signature on the back. Unfortunately, I can't read it. And I don't know the script. And it also has a stamp for the company or the individual who made it that registered it also cannot read that. So not a lot of help trying to figure out what this is other than it's just very cool. It has a very small hook right at the top to be able to hang it. It's in perfect condition. All of her fingers are there, all the bread, all the dough, everything is still in great condition. The corners are in great condition. It's got the braid all the way around it. So it's the Eastern European dough ornament. It's $5. $5 for the dough ornament, giving me number 51. Number 51, $5 for the East European dough ornament. All right. I got a great piece of pottery that I very seriously considered keeping and decided not to. I did do a little bit of research on it. It's this great... Uh, it's a kind of a light gray color uh, of the of the stoneware. It is this gorgeous wreath design, which has been painted all around the opening with the bow. It has an incised mark by the artist called Cowden, C-O-U-D-E-N, I think. I tried a couple variations. I tried Condon, thinking maybe that was a really sloppy N. Um, Cowden, C-O-W-D-E-N, is a 
uh, stoneware, but it's like 19th century stoneware, more like the Crocs like I've got behind me. So I don't think it's anything to do with that. So unfortunately, I think it's just an artist studio pottery piece that is a very talented potter. This is exceptionally symmetrical. It's exceptionally flat on the top, flat on the bottom. It was very well made. So I wish I could figure out who the who the Cowden was, but it can be yours by, and it's in perfect condition, no chips, no cracks, piece of art pottery for $10. $10 for the art pottery by giving me number 14. Number 14, the Cowden wreath bowl. And I'm falling behind in the chat. All right. So number 19, the cafe curtain slash apron went to Karen Radford. Congratulations. And 49, the German Santa mug went to M Ripley. Congratulations. And I think that you might be a new name to me, uh, M Ripley. So congratulations. Uh, so just don't forget at some point this evening or after you're done to send me an email with your shipping information so that I can send you a quote. None of my prices include um, shipping. So I need to figure out where you live so I can send you an invoice. And number 15, 51, the dough ornament went to Michelle at Mermaid Cove. So Hedden, uh, got Eastern European heading farther west, heading into California. Um, so congratulations to each of you. All right, we've got what uh, Dawn, the uh, doxy girl, uh, came for. Uh, for those who've not been in the chat before, Dawn Schonkweiler it runs a uh, charitable organization called Just One More Docks and Rescue, J-O-M-D-R dot org. And she currently has 17 dachshunds of her own, and she places she specializes in placing senior rescue dachshunds. So this is the dachshund dish towel. So it's got the hook on the back to be able to hang it. So again, we're not talking about a, a super aged piece. There was a tag on here somewhere. Here it is. It's from Comet and Cupid is the brand. And I don't know who did that. If that was a Target brand or, you know, it, I'm sure it was one of those specialty lines that one of the major, um, one of the major retailers probably put out like Kohl's or something like that. So it's from the Comet and Cupid brand uh, and it was made in India. So we've got the doxy towel, uh, the great little dachshund patterns of the snowflakes all over. It's in absolutely great condition. I don't think it was ever used. There's no staining. There's no fraying or anything to, this, to the seams. It's absolutely perfect. And it is $4. And you can pick, get the doxy towel for $4 by giving me number 20. Number 20 is $4 for the dachshund towel. All right. If you've ever joined my sales before, you know that I have inadvertently developed some very bizarre. Um, now uh, uh, I've become known for my coasters. Didn't know that it was an issue. Did not realize that everyone didn't love their coasters. I thought you know the entire world should be covered in coasters, but evidently I I'm alone in that opinion. But I do sell coasters, and so I had some Christmas coasters that I wanted to be able to sell, and so these are kind of that lacquer material, like kind of plasticky, kind of, they're like kind of lacquer with the foil on it. So they're four identical ones. They've got the gold uh, trim with the gold accented wreath. And then the background is white with gold stripes. It's not really coming across it on the screen, but that, those are gold stripes as well. So it's predominantly gold and then the red in the ribbon. So that's, that's the coloration of this, the gold, the red, the ribbon, and then the white background. There's four of these. They're all absolutely identical. They're all in absolutely perfect condition. No chips, no cracks. They're available as a set of four for $5. And $5, you get them by giving me number one. Number one, $5 for the set of coasters. And Katie loves her coasters too. So that is good. I am not alone. And, I've, and I have people buying coasters. So I, there, there's got to be a handful of us, but it's like a secret society. So the Doxy towel went to Lesta Fitzpatrick. Welcome back, Lesta. Uh, sorry, Dawn, you missed out on that one, but uh, that is what makes this all so fun. All right. This piece, it's going to be hard for me to show uh, because there's a lot of pieces to it. So bear with me a little bit. It took me a little while. It's, it's not really some assembly required, but it, you'll see what I mean in a little bit. So it's a hand carved nativity set. So I had to go through all the different pieces. So these are the three kings. My daughter and I kind of finally figured that out because these are the ones that have the crowns. So, all right, so they got the crowns 
And yes, they are. And these are more obviously bearing what most likely are the gifts. But I'll show you the other ones. And that, that is obvious now that we know that, but it took us a while to come to that conclusion. Uh, then we've got, let's go to the obvious ones. We've got the manger with baby Jesus that is separate because there is a, a thing which I didn't know until adulthood. All of my, my nativity set growing up, the baby Jesus was, it was ceramics, so it was molded into the, the, the piece. So it was out all the time, but evidently there's a thing in some families that the baby Jesus doesn't go into the manger until Christmas morning, which I find per perfectly honest, I find a little odd because then what are all the wise men doing there staring at an empty crib, but whatever. Uh, so this does allow you to put the baby Jesus in separately. So you've got a little carved Jesus and the main and the little um, manger itself. You've got some animals. You've got what I'm thinking is supposed to be the donkey. It's kind of looking like a pig, kind of looking like a dog. You've got, I'm pretty sure what's supposed to be the sheep. I would say that kind of passes a sheep, but it also kind of looks like a schnauzer. And then you've got another probably supposed to be a sheep, a very flat headed sheep. And then you've got Mary was a little bit more obvious. So you've got Mary, she's, she's got kind of the cape, you know, the, from the headdress going all the way down. So we had Mary, Oh, we had another animal. So we have four animals, so we don't lose track. And then we ended up with two mystery men. I'm like, one of them's got to be Joseph, and one of them must be a shepherd. So they are carved very similarly. What we've determined is, well, we determined that this one probably was the shepherd because he also seems to have more of a cloak on. But you could also say, well, that he's got the same cloak as Mary does. And, but then this one, uh, this one, like, does he have a hat? I don't know. You can make your choice. You can interchange. Okay. I'm not going to take that any further. Um, so we have this carved and I would say hand carved. It's not signed. There's no marks or anything of who did this. So I, I don't know how old it is. I don't know what kind of wood this is. I know a lot of times these pieces are made of olive wood. I would have said it was olive wood until I saw this piece because this piece is really, really dark. And I don't think olive wood gets that dark, um, but I could be wrong on that. So we've got all of these pieces that I've shown you. They're all available as hand carved nativity set. The entire set's available for $12. And you can get it for $12 by giving me number 17. Number 17, $12 for the hand carved wooden nativity set. And I've got an update. So the gold wreath coasters went to Karen Dondelinger. Oh, finally, something that's not breakable I get to send to the West Coast. All right. Something else not breakable I can send. So this was kind of a fun find. And I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, again, on the era of this. Um, what I liked about it particularly is I went to school in Springfield, Ohio, and these were made in Springfield, Ohio. So it just felt like one of those cases I needed to get it. It is a set, it's the Holiday Collection, Candlelight Greetings. It has 24 dinner napkins, which are 15 by 17, 24 placemats, and these are the placemat designs on the back, and 48 beverage napkins. So the square beverage napkins that are 10 by 10. So those are the ones in the middle. So they all have that the holly and the berry with the candle, uh, with the holiday greeting sign. So it was made by Spring, Spring Print Medallion. It's new old stock. It's still completely sealed and it's plastic. So all of those pieces are still there. If I had to guess, I would have said these are probably from the 90s. You know, maybe the 80s just based on that graphic, but probably the 90s, maybe even 2000. But I don't think it's much, much newer than that, but it does have a barcode, so it's not much older than that. Uh, Vinny is saying 70s to 90s because of that barcode exactly um they technically were introduced in the 70s but in a mass production like this they really weren't common until more like the 80s um but the art wise you know I, I who knows they're just very cool and if you're looking for like a vintage these are all paper goods all set i think this would just look cool in like a little vignette just leaned across uh, oh, somebody's down the road from Springfield, Ohio. Oh, Jenny X. Yes, Springfield, Ohio. I went to Wittenberg University, class of 92. Uh, so yes, been to Springfield many, many times. So anyway, so this is new old stock of the holiday table settings. You can have them for $8. $8 for number 35. $8 for the holiday table setting number 35. 
All right. Number 17, the wood nativity set went to Joanne Baber. Congratulations, Joanne. All right. We are going to do another a small piece of porcelain. This is one of those pieces that I struggle with a little bit because it's not marked in any way. Unfortunately, the way the light is, you you can't really see it, but I it is translucent. So it is porcelain. It is a nice piece of porcelain. It is actually very nicely designed. There's it's very clean uh, design on here, but it's not marked. And it, when I, I get leery when things aren't super obvious that they're vintage, that you know that Vinny is going to say they came from the dollar store. So I don't think this came from the dollar store. I think this is a little bit too high quality um, to be dollar store item, but who knows? But I didn't pay that much for it. So I'm not going to try and get a lot for it because I don't know what it is. So I'm only asking $4. So I would say it is a votive holder and it is translucent. So it'll look great with a little candle in there. It's only $4. You can have $4 by giving me number 55. $4 for number 55. All right. This was an item that I showed on my uh, preview earlier today. Of uh, looking, going back, looking at new old stock. So these are a set of bells, uh, which are from, and you can kind of tell they've got age to it because they're actually promoting that they're from Brooklyn, New York, not from New York City, New York. So this is before the boroughs started identifying as a set of five boroughs. They also have a set of the double glow hangers for ornaments. Now this one is probably pushing into the 70s. It's definitely after 1963 because there's a zip code. So this one is going a little bit, and I would say based on the tag that's on there, possibly the 80s, 70s to 80s, but they were only 15 cents for uh, the item. And they, they came from Marshall Fields. And if people remembered Marshall Fields, you couldn't get anything for 15 cents at Marshall Fields. So this is pretty, pretty old. And then these are the oldest. And I was trying to do some research on it and I couldn't quite figure them out. So we've got this set of ornament hangers that were for 10 cents for the box, regular size, made in the USA. But on the very side of it, and maybe if you guys know this, you can see somebody wrote 10 over the side, unfortunately, but you can see who made them. But it says Philadelphia 36 PA. And so that is that era that predated the zip codes, but I don't know when it became Philadelphia 36 as opposed to just Philadelphia. So I'm thinking these are 50s, but I don't know because I'm thinking that maybe this was like maybe the end of the 50s before um, the zip codes kicked in in 1963, but maybe they're significantly older than that. I have no idea. So anyway, it's this set of three. You get the ornament hooks that are clearly older, the vintage or, or, organ hook, uh, uh, ornament hooks, and then also the vintage bells that still jingle. You get all three of them for eight bucks, eight dollars for the three sets, and you get them by giving me number five. Number five, the set of all three, eight dollars. Number five for the vintage pieces. And Vinny, Vinny's promises those are not from the dollar store, so that's good. That I'll sleep well tonight knowing that. Uh, so number 35, the holiday party paper goods went to Gabe, Gabby White. So congratulations, Gabby. All right. Um, so we are going to go to a fun piece. This also, if you followed my Instagram, uh, this showed up. I wanted to make sure I just had some variety during the sale. And ad admittedly, I had to kind of drift away from the, the true definition of vintage. Uh, but I still wanted to have fun because I didn't want this to just be a series of Christmas ornaments and have people get bored. So... We have Manga Claws, Blade of Kringle. <laughs> so it is a manga Christmas book. Now, it is not particularly old. It is from 2006. But what is key about it is it is from 2006. But it also, if you remember what we were talked about in one of my earlier sales, it is a first edition. It doesn't say first edition, but if you look at the string of numbers, you can see the number all the way to the side still has the one on it. So the fact that it still has a one on it means it's the first edition. When they go to print the second run, it'll they'll erase the one and it'll just have the number two. So whenever you see a string of numbers or letters like that, that's how you tell the, the smallest one you see is the edition that it is. So since this has still got the number one on it, 
uh, from 2006. It's the first edition. You can see that they planned on reprinting this quite often because they have the 10 all the way up, listed all the way up to 10. So they already planned on doing 10 editions of this from the day it was launched. Now, whether they did or not, I have no idea because this is not a book I am particularly familiar with. Uh, but there's some great, you know, graphic novel graphics. I mean, it's considered manga. So you've got, you know, the individual, you got the ninja elves. You've got, you know, some, it's some, mostly black and white with the art, with the red art decoration. You've got a pretty ripped Santa. You know, he's, he's been doing his crunches that uh, he's uh, the manga, manga claws. So first edition manga claws, available for $5, five bucks for the first edition Number 52, $52, $5 for Manga Claws. All right. Now, because Amelia loves grab bags so much, I decided to throw a grab bag into the middle of the regular sale. So we're going to start with the cats because I got so much grief by doing only a dog sale. I have no apologies, but I recognize that not everyone is a dog person. So I came across these sets of ornaments that I thought would make a fun uh, grab bag. These, I truly have no idea how old these are. Um, they're terracotta. I don't think they're super, they're not old, but they're also, I don't think they're brand new either. So we're gonna start with the cats. And so what I've got is a set of three of these little terracotta cats. So you've got the lying cat. It means the cat lying down, not he's telling lies. The cat holding the heart and they're double sided. And then this one is a cat licking his paws. But I'll be honest, there are we're going to do this as a grab bag or just as a, there's multiples of these so that more than one person can grab an item. There are three sets three or four sets that have the cats licking his paw and then two or three sets that have a cat that's in this exact same position, but all four paws are on the ground. So he's still like, he's just seated. He's not licking his paw, but they're the exact same size, virtually the same design it had to have been by the same company because the other ones matched, but you get the set of three and we're going to do this. We're going to try and be fair because I only have a total of six of these sets. So if you want more than one, you have to enter your number more than once. You can't just say your number times two, times three, or times six. You can't grab them all. If you want uh, one of these, the set of three is available for $5. So you will get a full set of three of the cats. They're available for $5 by giving me number 48. So the first six people that give me 48, or the first six times we see the number 48, you, those are the six people that will get the set of ornaments. Five dollars, number forty-eight for the three, all three of the cat terracotta cat ornaments. So we got the cats, but I probably wouldn't have bought them if they didn't also have the dogs. So we have the exact same thing in the dogs. Now I'm pretty sure these are still terracotta because like the cord is the same. So I want to say they're like the same company. Again, I have no way of knowing because they were all mixed together. But if you look, the the it's a lot redder. And I don't know why that is. So if I kind of compare the two, the dogs are a little bit shinier and a little bit redder. But I'm pretty sure they're still terracotta. I, and if anyone knows, I would be happy to hear. I'd be happy to learn. Um, but I'm, I'm almost positive this is terracotta. And I'm making an assumption this is terracotta because they're the same company. But it's just redder than I'm used to. It's also shiny. So I think they might've put a glaze. Maybe that's what they did. Maybe they put a glaze on these where this is kind of the bisque finish. It's like the original, like the original terracotta. Maybe they just didn't glaze this one the same way. So this one, I'm pretty sure is still the terracotta. You've got the little terrier, which I'm pretty sure, hold him so you can see him. Pretty sure he's a Scotty. You've got a dachshund. Pretty sure that's a dachshund, but you could kind of like, if you, Tried really hard, Katie. You could make him a pug. He could be a pug. And then the third one is just the little wolf, the little bone. So it's the same deal. I happen to have, yes, I happen to have six of these as well. And these are all the same. So all th the sets are the same. They didn't have that change like the other one with the cats. So you get the bone, 
the terrier and the pugsend, the dachshund pug. Um, you have the set of three, same price, still for $5. To the first six people or the first six times we see the number nine. So nine gets you the three terracotta um, ornaments. And Katie said it could be a pug because it's got the little curly tail. And actually, that's a good point. Do dachshunds have curly tails, uh, Don? I hadn't even paid attention to the curly tail. I just thought he looked longer. So anyway, number nine, five dollars for the set of three dog ornaments. And if you want more than one set, just enter the number nine more than once. You just can't do it, you know, times two. All right. So those were sitting in a pair of mugs. So I'll go ahead and show you the mugs next. Let's see. Do we have, let's see, 52 was the Santa Manga book. That went to Laura Bemos. Why did I'm not surprised, Laura, that you're the one that picked that up? And 35, uh, that one we already had. So, okay, so the cat ornaments went to Lori C., Stacy Brinkley, Humpty Dumpty, Shirley Pearl. Hey, Shirley, didn't see you join, sorry. And Lynn Hampton. So congratulations. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, I'm sorry, and Stacy was able to get in twice. So Stacy's getting two sets. So all six of those are accounted for. All right, so those were sitting in this pair of mugs that I absolutely love. Again, considered keeping for myself, but at some point I can't keep everything. So these are approaching vintage standards by Etsy because they are marked 2001. They are from the Watkins Corporation, Winona, Minnesota. So if you're from the Midwest, you know Watkins. I remember as a child going to, uh, is it Arizona Charlie's or Montana Charlie's, the flea market we would go to all the time. My mom would get all the Watkins seasonings. So Watkins is a name that I grew up on, but I never saw anything this cool during my during the Watkins days. So again, 2001 was long past my childhood, but you've got it it's design it's decorated on all sides. So from the handle, you've got the the uh, il the drawing illustration of the winter uh, covered snow covered house with the wreath at the gate. You've got the big Watkins uh, logo advertising on the side, and on the flip side is what's my favorite. It's this gingerbread gothic uh, arched gateway on the porch which is the same porch that you can see from the front of the house. So it's the same house, but you've got it from the reverse. So you're looking from the porch out into the street with a horse drawn sleigh. That architecture to me is just stunning with the wooden slats on the porch. They got the wreaths, you know, absolutely Christmas, absolutely gorgeous. And there's a matched pair of them. They're in perfect condition, no chips, no cracks, fairly decent size. On the bottom of it is a recipe for hot cocoa, in case you you know want to make your own. Uh, it is dated 2001, but I thought it was interesting. They had the website, so they were cutting edge. You know, 2001 was you know people are already adding websites to their products. Uh, this mug, the recipe says it makes six six ounce servings. I would guess that this mug is kind of a 12 ounce mug, maybe 10. I'd, I'd say 12. What do you say, Amelia? 12 ounce. Yeah. Probably about a 12 ounce. We've got a Keurig, so a lot of things based on like what's the ounces because otherwise it either overflows or you have an empty cup. So it's the pair of Watkins mugs, perfect pristine condition, beautiful illustrations on them, very wintry, and they are available uh, as the pair. You get both of them for $9 by giving me number 13. $9, number 13 for both of the Watkins mugs. Oh, and Randy Heilman is here. So for those who uh, might have missed it, Randy Heilman was successful in winning the llama planter uh, from last week. So this went on to eBay. Randy was successful in um, fighting off the uh, final bidders. There's a little bit of a bidding war at the very end. But Randy was successful with this. So if Randy gets anything else tonight, I can package everything together and save you on some shipping. Uh, but congratulations on that. And because Randy's down here, I will then also highlight, because uh, we're going to do that again this week. As I mentioned, we've got Christmas ornaments coming out, the yin-yang from the estate that I was working with. So we're going to put one set of them up online, because in working with Rachel at Superior Girl Vintage, these were the ornaments that probably had the most variability of value based on who wanted them. So what I've got is a set of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, uh, all shiny bright ornaments but they're kind of the specialty shiny brights. So there's two double indents. So there's two 
of these shiny brights that have the double indents. And again, these are the shiny brights that all have the made in USA on the top. So these are the Ameri these are the vintage ones. Those two are considered the double indents. The um, this one is I discovered. I learned a lot in prepping, helping this uh, friend prep her sale. And uh, this one is called a UFO. I did not know such a thing existed in vintage ornaments, but this is a shiny bright UFO, and it's got the mica uh, finish to it. These two round ornaments with the stripes also have the mica. So this one is mica covered on the top and on the bottom, and this one has the mica as two of the stripes above and below the gold. This one is harder to tell, but well, actually they both are. It's harder to tell from this angle, but if you hold them up to the light, these are actually clear glass globe. Well, they're transparent. This one is, is clearly like a greenish glass. This one is a clear glass that's been painted the pink and then the mica. So those are actually translucent. And then you've also got the bell-shaped shiny bright. And I don't know. I never figured out what this one was called, but you can see it's got the swirl pattern to it. So it's like dimensional. Uh, so all of these are vintage shiny brights. They're all made, have the tops made in the USA. These are all now available. They're currently live on my eBay channel right now, uh, up for auction. And the auction will end uh, about, I think, like half an hour before the sale next week. So if you go to my any one of my social media, you can find the link to eBay. I'm still not really using it that much, but I've got a few more pieces on there. For anyone who watched my live haul for the trip down to Kentucky, you might have seen that I did a live haul. I did a live haul from the hotel, and I was laughing about the fact that I had bought these Hercules plates. Okay, if you're paying attention, Laura, you need to stop eating off those plates and you need to go sell them because I currently have three sets of Hercules uh, movie plates from McDonald's. I have three sets of them up. The set of six is currently, they're all three in auction. The set of six is currently at a bit of $50. The set of five, I think was at 32 and the set of four was at something like 26. It, insane amount of money for McDonald Disney plates. Now Hercules does happen to be my favorite movie, but I was even surprised how much those plates were worth. And I mentioned it to Laura and she said that her family eats off those plates all the time. So if you want to make some money, Laura, you, you put them up on eBay and uh, hopefully you can do well. All right. So the, um, did the dog ornaments not sell? All right. So we've got some of the ornaments sold, but I don't have the names. So, okay. Amelia's still putting that up. Um, so then number 13, the pair of Watkins mugs went to Carolyn Gatles. All right. So, and the dog ornaments went to Lori C, Chris Rice, and Don Schunkweiler. So congratulations. All right. So I met, get, sold the, uh, the mugs, but I did split these up because I didn't think necessarily the people that would want the mugs would necessarily want the pie plate and vice versa. But the Watkins mugs that had the recipe for the hot chocolate has the same design as the Watkins pie plate, which has the recipe for the fireside French apple pie recipe for the pie plate. So again, I remember growing up with things like this. I, ours was a, I think it was a pumpkin pie was the pie plate that we had that had the, they, they had the recipe on the middle. So this one has it on the back, but this is far more attractive because this can be pulled out at holiday times. You don't even have to bake the pie. You can just put this on display because it's a very large size with again, that gorgeous gingerbread uh, design uh, on the porch. So this piece is in absolutely perfect condition. I do think it was, it might've been used because there's a little bit of discoloration you know, on the base where it may have actually been in an oven, but there's no chips, there's no cracks, there's nothing missing. And you know, from a display standpoint, it would look fantastic. It is gonna be a little heavy. It's I mean, by itself, it's probably about a pound, maybe a little over a pound. So just keep that in mind if I'm shipping it long distances, um, but it's very sturdy that I don't anticipate breakage being a problem. It's just It just weighs a little bit. So just keep that in mind. But this one is $8 for the pie plate and you can have it by giving me number 15. Number 15, $8 for the pie plate. All right, we're gonna jump into another piece of vintage Christmas. This again is from the uh, estate that I was helping price out. I was not familiar with these. Some of the other stuff I'd never really handled before, I didn't really grow up with. Um, these like started ringing a bell. 
So this is a combination uh, set of foil Christmas decorations. So what these are, and I never had, saw, had any of this nice, but at least when I saw them, I knew what they were. These are the little candle reflectors that if you were to light the little candle in church, you'd slide this over. Like most of the time, you know, what I remember growing up is they were just little pieces of paper, you know, that slid over and usually had so, such big holes from where it was folded, the wax would drip down and burn your hands anyway. But so you get this set of little, these little reflectors. This one has the blue interior. This one has the red interior. This one's kind of a chartreuse yellow, another red, and then this one's more of a gold yellow. So we'll hold those two up together because this one kind of reads a little bit yellow, but there's definitely, you can kind of see there's a greenish tint to that one where this is a tr more of a true gold. So I don't know if you guys know what era this would be from. Like I'm thinking 50s maybe 60s, but I do not think 70s. Because again, I was a child of the 70s and I don't think we had anything like that. And then this, I'm going to assume was from the same era. It's from the same estate. So it's one of those cases where probably at once upon a time, they all went together. But this has the little, little hanger. Now the one that I saw when I looked, tried to look these up online and realized these sell for quite a bit of money. The one that I found had like a little bell that hung down from the middle of it. And this one does not have that bell. So this one, it, but you wouldn't know it's missing, but I just, I share that because I'm not sure what would make it complete, but this is, it's a complete wreath. And it's, you know, some of the pieces are a little bit, you know, bent, but they're kind of bent to begin with. So I can't really say that there's any damage to it. It's just, that's the way the flowers are attached. I don't think any of the flowers are missing. Um, so when I worked with Rachel on this, like this was one of the ones that I just really didn't know how to price. So great, grateful to Rachel of, um, of uh, Superior Gold Vintage. So Barb JM is saying late, mid to late fifties. So, okay. So I was kind of guessing the same thing. Uh, so this one, as a set, you get the, the candle reflectors and the foil wreath as a set, it's $15 and you can get that full set for $15 by giving me number 56. So number 56 is the foil wreath and all of the reflectors. All right. You knew just one set of coasters. One's going to be enough. I had to have more. So this one is also, it's one of those cases you think about your childhood. I, I grew up on Norman Rockwell. I grew up on Precious Moments. I, David Winter. Hummel was not a regular part of our home. Uh, the only Hummel that we had was the Madonna and Child. It had a B mark and it sat in the bottom of our curio cabinet with pride of place, had the spotlight on it and everything. And it was a piece that my parents received as a gift from a hitchhiker. That is the story I grew up with that they gave somebody a lift somewhere. I still don't, I, I'm sure they told me, I don't remember, but they hit, they picked up a hitchhiker. And when they took them to wherever they were going, they dropped them off at a uh, truck stop. And in the truck stop, there was a gift shop. And so in the gift shop, the, the hitchhiker bought my parents this Hummel. Okay. Uh, I think my dad would have probably preferred the fifth of Jack Daniels, but whatever. So Hummels, I knew what they were. We just didn't, we just didn't have them. We didn't have like the apple tree boy and girl, like all the different types, but I knew what they were. So when I saw this one, I liked it because it's from the Berta Hummel Museum. But it's from the it's from it's marked Schmidt, uh, which is Schmidt 1979, and so it's it's not the exact same look as Hummel, but it's from that same line. And what I like about this one is it's just a Christmas piece. Well, first of all, I love it because it's a coaster, but it's just one for Christmas time. So it's kind of like you can have a little bit of that Schmidt, a little bit of that Hummel look in your house, but you can put them away to 11 months out of the year because that's not necessarily a look for everybody. So this is a very, it's, I, I do think it's an attractive porcelain coaster. It's from the Bertel Hummel Museum. They're considering it part of the miniature plate collection. But the difference is most miniature plates, as the, if they're designed to be hung, have the little holes in them to be able to hang them. This one does not. So this one actually is sized properly and has the flat surface to be a coaster. So I'm selling it as a coaster. So I'm selling it for, yeah, you're right, Barb. I don't know if it was safe to pick up hitchhikers back then. It was probably in the 60s. So maybe it was more, it was probably more common, but the Bird of Hummel coaster, five bucks. You can get it by giving me number 12. 
number number 12 for the Berger Hummel Museum Schmid coaster with the little girl pulling the toys and the Christmas tree. And I like the Christmas tree too. It's like that German feather tree style. I just, I just like the like the looks of it. Oh my, I'm falling behind. All right. Uh, so let's see. We had um, number 13. Oh, we had that one. Number 15, the Watkins pie plate went to Karen Radford. And then uh, number 56, the foil Christmas items went to Flesta Fitz Lesta Fitzpatrick. And the Hummel coaster went to Mama J. Congratulations. Um, so the candle reflectors could also be put on old fashioned Christmas lights. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's from Pete's Repeats. So, okay, that would make sense. And may, I wonder if you would put them on the little bubbler style or just the ones that would be like the, the clip on lamp, the, the lights. That's actually an interesting way to using it. And I think it would really, they, they're very shiny. They're very reflective. So I think that would actually show up really nice. Okay, uh, so the next item we've got is a photograph. I picked this up um, along with the dog photo that I sold in my dog sale. This one is, I just thought was a really attractive Christmas piece without screaming Christmas. It's the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree from New York City from Rockefeller Plaza. So it's got the, the you know, the angels playing the trumpets in the foreground. You really just see the trumpets. Um, you know, then it recesses to the giant tree in the background. It's an attractive piece, eight by 10 print and 11 by 14 mat. So it's unframed, but that also means it's gonna be very inexpensive to ship. It's only $6. It is signed by the photographer on the mat. Uh, so it is a signed piece of photography, uh, original art, uh, original photograph. You can get it for six bucks, $6. Give me number 42. $6, number 42 for the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. All right. All right, this piece was another kind of game that my daughter and I played and we're gonna take, it's gonna be difficult to showcase all of this. So right off the bat, <laughs> we're gonna show you my, my BC bowl. This is a set, it is a nativity set. It is a very, very small nativity set. So you can see, I, I, I'm not gonna come up with some fancy name for it. I think they're just, it's just plastic. It's just like a, it's just a resin. They're very nicely detailed though, for what they are. So I do think there is some age to these um, simply because they're so well done. Um, I, I think there's some time put into these. They're not marked in any way. I think they're injection molded. You can see the seam on them. So I don't know, maybe because they're so well done, maybe they're brand new, maybe they were made last week, maybe they're from the dollar store. I don't, you, you tell me, Vinny. But what this set includes, I picked these up at, again, from Fatbird Finds, I picked these up at uh, Layman's, the store in Paducah that is owned by Laura, Madam Fatbird, her mother. Um, and it was just this cute little set. So, okay, so I'm already running out of fingers, but what's included, which is not, nor what, to me was not normal, is all of these angel figures are part of the nativity set. So you've got all of these pieces all playing different musical instruments. All of their wings are still intact. You know, there's just, they're just, everything is just very, very small. So you've got all the angels. This was another case that when you start matching up all the men, we found the three wise men, but we ended up with three leftovers to figure out one of these is Joseph. So you can take your pick again, you can be random. We, we think this one is Joseph, although he has a, he's got a walking stick and a fanny pack. Um, but he is the same height when he's kneeling, he's the same height as the Mary. So we think that that's probably the Joseph because these two are significantly taller because they're both standing. So this one most likely is a shepherd. This one is definitely a shepherd. Although I think Katie has that hat. So I, I again, arrow wise, I don't know what that dude's doing with his hat. He seems to be a traveler, but he is not the one of the wise men. Wise men didn't have a messenger bag. So, you know, this, some of the pieces just were odd. There's all kinds of animals. There's like four or five different animals, including, sorry, including deer. <laughs> Why are there deer in Bethlehem? I, we don't know what any of this is, but let me find the important piece before I get struck by lightning. All right. And so then they do have the, the tiny baby Jesus. Again, in very nice level of detail. I mean, the individual hay pieces, 
you know, it's it's got it's got a little bit of a rake to it, so it sits at an angle. It is a very attractive set. But they were very kind to me uh, when I was picking this up. Here are two of the wise men I was able to pull off at the top. You can see they're actually holding gifts, and again, they're holding crowns. So there's way, and here's the third one, gift, crown. So we've got the wise men, and then a cow, a donkey, a sheep, another donkey. Oh, there's this angel, which I think is the angel. Normally there's an angel that like hangs over everybody, like hangs over the manger. I think that's that one because it's two dimensional. Like it's designed to be hung. There's another deer because, you know, Bethlehem needs deer. Um, a horse, which again, not something I typically think of when I think of Bethlehem, but I'm sure they had horses. Another sheep and another sheep. So we got a, a multi-piece set. It's a fairly large set. I got a really nice price on it and I'm just passing off as a really nice price to you guys too, because it's just a sweet little piece. I have no idea in the age. I have no idea it's value. So I'm passing on for seven bucks, $7 gets you all of those pieces. You just need to find a really flat surface to be able to set them all up because they're very, very small. But for $7, you get the entire nativity set by giving me number 36. You do not get the BC bowl. Those are mine but I needed something to be able to hold all those tiny pieces. So number 36, $7 for the entire nativity set. All right, so we've uh, number 42, the Rockefeller tree, cr uh, Christmas tree went to Carolyn Gatles. Uh, congratulations, and fanny pack guy could be the doctor. Oh, I never really thought about the fact that they would have a doctor. I think they probably didn't. Yeah, I guess somebody was being funny and I'm missing it. Yeah, he, he, I, I'm sorry. He has a mess. He's got a, he's got, there was a fanny pack and there's a guy with a messenger bag. So I don't know if this is like hipster nativity. I have no idea. Um, but regardless, uh, oh, and, the, and somebody's saying that the angel that hangs above has a name. Hark. Hark the Herald Angels Sing a song. I didn't know that. I didn't know the angel had a, song, had a name. I just know there normally was one. Okay. Well, that's interesting. All right. Uh, we're going to move into another traditional piece of porcelain. And this one is truly, uh, truly vintage because it's almost as old as me. Um, this is a piece of Balik. Now, this is not something that I typically would pick up because although I, I like Balik and I actually do like porcelain and I, I love items like this, like true holiday items, they only can, they can come out for a month and then you put them away so you can enjoy them, but then rotate out something else. What I don't typically like is plates that are marked with the year. So this one is marked Christmas. 1972, but it's got, and it's also, there's, it's a bisque porcelain kind of in this inner border, but the outer border that has the vines on it. And then this inner border with the geese, that's got the luster, the, the, the high gloss, um, the high gloss uh, sheen to it. So if you like the leak, it's, you know, you, there's a very, what's great about the leak is it's very easy to uh, age or uh, date their pieces because they changed colors, they changed shapes. They, you, know, you can pretty easily figure out how old something is. Well, this one you don't even need to try. It's 1972. So it, you know that this is the older Balik um, stamp. But it's not to everyone's taste because not everyone is putting out dated, unless you have any born in 1972, you know, not always putting out dated items. But this is, these do sell pretty well online. So if this does, doesn't sell here, I'll go ahead and try and sell it online. But I just thought it was just something different. Um, and it's Balik. You know, Jeffrey loves Balik. Um, it's just a, it's a pretty piece. But I priced it knowing that it's not going to be for everybody. So it's $7. $7 for the Balik 1972 Christmas plate. $7 for number 18. $7, number 18 gets you the 1972 piece of Balik. Oh, so Michelle, you do your Christmasing for two months. I, I kind of go in between. Last year was rough because for Christmas, I actually went to Europe to visit Amelia, my daughter, while she was studying in Germany. We went to uh, um, Austria. So, you know, woe is me. But because of that, I wasn't actually home for Christmas. I was traveling on Christmas Day. So I barely decorated at all. And I, I it bummed me out. I love Christmas. So usually it's the week of Thanksgiving is when it goes up. And then I typically bring it down like the first week of January. So I'm not quite to the two months, but a uh, month and a half. All right. These I picked up and it's, I'm going to I I like the concept of them more than 
the idea that I'm going to actually use them. So I'm going, ahead and going, going to go ahead and pass them on because what they are is it's one of those types of pieces that you, they're double-sided. They're a set of placemats. They're the Courier and I placemats. But what's nice about them, what really attra originally attracted me to them is they've got this great winter ice skating scene on the front, you know, typical Courier and I've seen. But the way they're designed, they also made a Christmas version so you could spin them around and have the winter, the Christmas scene on the back. So this is one placemat that's basically double-sided. I picked them up, really liked them, and then I realized that some of them, the lamination is coming off at the corners. So it's a full set of, I want to say eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's a full set of eight, but they're showing a little bit more damage than I would like to have in my personal collection. And to be perfectly honest, more than I would typically want to sell, but they're still in good shape. I mean, this is these are very practical. And these would be, these would not be for display. These would be for functional use. Like you would just have these for your breakfast, whatever. They're very utilitarian. The graphics are still in great shape. You're just got, there's a couple of them that have a little bit of problem with the edge. But if you trim some of them down or get rid of the ones that are damaged, you'd still have a nice set. Probably like four of them are probably unblemished at all. So I'm pricing it that way. It's a set of eight. But admittedly, there's more problems than I typically like to have with them, but they're a functional piece. It'd be great for a family to have for just your everyday, you know, placemats. Of course, less people don't use placemats either, but I use placemats every day. A uh, placemat set of eight is $6 for the Courier and I placemat set, $6 for number four. So number four for the double-sided Courier and Ives and Christmas plates, placemat sets. All right, uh, number 36, the plastic nativity went to Karen Radford. So congratulations, Karen. Uh, Katie from uh, Vintage and Vinyl, the live nativity. They, oh, I, I'd love to see a camel running through the streets of Jacksonville. Uh, so um, that's the benefit of a plastic nativity. Nothing's gonna run away. Okay, uh, let's see. We're gonna move into my childhood again. So this is a piece that almost by definition I grew up with. I've mentioned it if you've watched my channel before, it'd be these sales. My mother had Fran's Hobby Corner was what I grew up with. That was in her basement. And her primary piece of what she would work on was ceramics. So she would teach classes. Uh, women, I think almost exclusively women, would come into our home and they would make all the pieces of ceramic. Like all of those trees, that, the Christmas trees that people go gaga for, we made those every day that I, if I kept them, I'd be rich. Um, the homemade ceramics is not for everyone's taste. I recognize that it is not necessarily for my taste because I grew up with it. So I don't typically pick up these DIY, these home studio, these, these home ceramic pieces, but this one was, I'm sorry, it was too cute to pass up. It's a little trinket dish. It's a rectangular dish. It is signed by the maker, and I'm going to assume based on the very the very simplistic way that signed, this was probably made by a child. But you know that was the benefit of doing uh, doing ceramics. You could do this as a child. I grew. I made some pretty. I made our my first nativity set. Um, whoever had made it did a very nice job filing down all the seams. It's in really nice condition. They used a decal for the front that is not a uh, hand-painted item. That is a decal. And it's just an adorable little angel looking up at an ornament that has the nativity scene in it. And I just thought that was a very subtle use of the nativity scene. It's just that childlike little uh, angel. And I'm not sure. I think it's just a ruffle around the, the robes. I originally thought it was like a string of popcorn. But I think it's just, you know, it's just the, the robe that the baby angel is wearing. It's just a cute little piece and it's a cute little price. So the uh, AP marked ceramic trinket dish, six bucks, six dollars, number 47. Number 47, six dollars for the little angel uh, trinket dish. All right. Amelia, when she saw, I do lists when we get things started, when I do the sales, so it's easier for her to keep track of things. And she was going through the uh, synopsis of what I was selling. She's like, what is a scented hot pad? And the, the first question was, well, does it still have the scent? Well, it should, 
but it is new old stock and it is scented hot pad cranberry orange and it's from time, time and again is the brand i don't know well i don't know what brand that is but it's a scented hot pad cranberry orange 8.6 ounces on the back oh it's gans I was, i'm sitting here looking for the name i knew it was labeled somewhere so it's this like rope like fabric thing that had the scent inside that coils all the way around into the middle and so it says right on there's a scented hot pad it is i didn't see a um year on it but like i said i did see the ma the maker is gans and that's you know that name is still around it does have a website on it so again this is not talking about a huge amount of age but i would guess this is probably in the 2000 to 2010 era i don't think these are things that are still around anymore but in the 2000s you know totally was and so i smell a little bit of it you know so uh, the idea that you'd put something you, you'd put your pan or put your uh, casserole dish or something on there and by putting the heat on it it would release the scent a little bit more i'm not going to swear that it's still 100 percent functional but i do smell a little bit coming out of there so it's just kind of a cool little uh, throwback to what you know what the christmas once was you know maybe 10 15 20 years ago and you can get it for four bucks you too can remember your kids childhood christmas number 10. So the little uh, set scented hot pad for cranberry orange, $4 for number 10. All right. This is a piece I kind of went back and forth on because I was trying to figure out the mark. I What I landed on is I'm pretty sure this is another DIY piece, but this one is significantly earlier than the era that I was doing them in the 70s. It is marked on the back, Nancy Gill. Now it's an incised mark, so it's entirely possible that Nancy Gill just the she made she painted this, and that is her name. But the shape of this is just something that I don't feel was something that was made in ceramic studio classes. But it's got the weight of ceramics. It has the stilt marks. I mean, this is clearly ceramics. This is clearly glaze. Um, you know, for, for people that sometimes wonder, like, oh, those are flaws. If you ever see a piece that is a ceramic piece and not a porcelain piece, you're always going to see, and typically they're in sets of three. They'd be, it'd be a little triangle. And I think George called them spider marks. I didn't, I never grew up calling them spider marks. They were called stilt marks because literally what this would do is you would glaze, you'd paint this entire surface. You would then have this little three pronged piece that was not painted that was just regular ceramic or regular porcelain with three metal spikes that stuck out of it. You would put this onto those three spikes somehow. So you usually find three of them evenly spaced and they're usually widely spaced so that the item didn't tip over because you, when you loaded the kiln, kilns had shelves, even home kilns had shelves and you had to kind of like Jenga everything and you could never have a piece of paint, a painted piece, touch another painted piece or touch the edge of the kiln or touch the shelf. So you would put these up on stilts because if you didn't, you set this right on the shelf and then you fired the kiln, all of that paint, when it created this glazed surface that protects the ceramic, it would glaze itself onto the shelf. And when you then tried to take it off, you would damage either the piece or the shelf. So you would bring this piece up on those little three little spikes. The spikes were just plain metal. So they wouldn't, the glaze wouldn't stick to anything. You then would typically, you might have to pry it off because it did glue just to the very tip. And then you would end up with these tiny little marks. You're supposed to file them down. You'd still see them and feel them, but you're supposed to file it down. This is not filed down very well. That's why I think it is a DIY piece. It's just a very nicely done DIY piece. And I think it's far earlier. I think this is probably early 60s as opposed to 70s, just based on this boomerang shape. I'm not sure they did DIY in the 50s wouldn't swear to that. Um, but regardless, it is a very cool shape. It's got the candles in the middle. It's got the holly leaf and the pine cone, you know, design, uh, kind of a nice little artistic touch of to the edges. I felt it looked like a piece of California pottery, but I, it may be DIY. So I don't know. So I'm just going to pass it off for what it is. A really cool looking piece. So it's $9, $9 for the cool looking piece is number three for the boomerang, uh, Christmas design by Nancy Gill. Hey, Nate. All right. 
And we've got number 47, the Angel Box went to April Fool. And the placemats went to Shirley Pearl. So congratulations to both of you and welcome back, uh, April Fool. I forgot what your real name is, but I know you've been with us before and you bought from us before, so welcome back. Okay, I'm um, gonna jump into another set of the vintage ornaments. So this is, uh, I'll just I'll just say right from the beginning, this is the most expensive piece uh, in the sale. Um, this is a set of Santa Land uh, Christmas ornaments. This one is marked on the edge that it is a product of Poland. And inside are all, inst all ornaments marked from Poland. Now, admittedly, they are not the ornaments that started with it because the ornaments, they are all Polish ornaments, they're all marked Poland, but they are not all match design. There's five large ones so this one has the cross painted on it, which is gold and burgundy. And this is a similar cross painted, which is uh, more of a silver and more of a fuchsia. Uh, and actually I said this was burgundy actually has the fuchsia too. So those are kind of a pink and gold and pink and silver. So those are the spherical ones. Then you've got the hand painted. This is, I don't know if that's considered the teardrop one where you've got the little thing that comes down the bottom but there's this one that has the leaf pattern and then the white alternating the panels. This one has that pink again, alternating with the panels, but again, that same point down at the bottom. And this one has a really pretty blue and then they painted birds on the panels in between. So those are all the large sets. So those may have been a set, although I don't know if they would have mixed the round with the with the ones with little drop. So I'm not sure, but all, all of those are marked Poland, but then there were six holes in the box. So we ended up grabbing, there's this one is marked Poland, also has the little point down at the bottom and it has the little panel, it's just gold and gold. And then these two little round ones are also marked Poland. So this one's got the green with the little painted band with the leaf in the middle. And then this one is the all over red with the silver glitter uh, design on the top and on the bottom. So you get the original Santa Land box, which evidently is a collector's item in and of itself. And you get the five large ornaments and the three small ornaments. Again, working with uh, Rachel at, uh, at um, Superior Girl Vintage, she came up with what the price should be. She helped me come up with the price on these and they're $30 and you get them by giving me number 62. $30 is number 62 for the set of Poland, made in Poland uh, uh, glass ornaments. All right. We're gonna go to a piece of porcelain. Uh, this was a piece that I picked up. Sorry, I need a drink. Just Diet Dr. Pepper though. All right. This I had picked up with the intention of selling it uh, in Etsy, my Etsy store over Christmas. And then I forgot I had it because I went through a trend where I was picking up so many things that I wasn't getting them all listed. So it's coming out for Christmas in July because what this is, is Christmas Eve at Mr. Wardle's house. Admittedly, I am not familiar with Pickwick papers, but that is what this represents. And it is Royal Ducal. So it's a British porcelain Ducal ware. It's marked on the back, very clearly marked. This is part of a series of all from the Pickwick papers that are all made as ducal ware. They are very highly uh, collectible, primarily in England, but there's a following here too. Um, and if it doesn't sell here, I will put it on my Etsy store. But I thought this was kind of a fun piece because I, although I don't know who Mr. Wardle is, and I didn't read the Pickwick papers. To me, this is just a cool scene that is very you know representative of Dickens you know, it could be, that could be Mr. Fezziwig. You can sit there and take a magic marker and cross out Christmas Eve at Mr. Wardle's. You know, you can say whatever you want. This is just a very attractive, old fashioned, you know, true definition of a Victorian Christmas design that would look great in a display, in a vignette. You know, this is not something you're gonna eat off of. It is, uh, there's quite a bit of crazing because of its age, but it's in beautiful shape. There's no chips, there's no cracks. The gold is in really good condition. The crazing is just showing that there's some age. So this is a great looking piece. May, um, again, for the ducal wear, make sure I have the right tag. It's $9 for the plate. 
and you can have it for number 31. Number 31, $9 gets you the Christmas Eve at Mr. Wardle's uh, porcelain plate. All right. I'm not sure this qualifies as a textile, but we're going to move into the kitchen. And we're going to move into a vinyl tablecloth. It's very large. It is, I wrote it down. It is 52 inches by 78 inches. So it is fairly large. It has some great graphics on here. So you've got the Santa skiing. You've got the Christmas lantern. You've got somewhere there's a wreath. You got the wreath. Santa's in a couple different places. And you've got the candles and the bells. So it's an all over pattern. It is stitched on the side. So this had been, you know, a big piece of vinyl that then just kind of got stitched so that it didn't, you know, tear or anything. I'm not sure if this was a production piece because I didn't find a label on it. It's not lined. A lot of the production ones would have been lined with like a, a fabric on the inside so it didn't slip around. Um, but this is Carolina Princess. This is, it is very large. I'm struggling trying to show this in any way, but it is just an all over pattern that you can see it just repeats itself, but it is, it's 52 inches by 78 inches. So it's a very large size. It's in great condition. There's a couple marks that does show a little bit of discoloration that maybe if you wiped it down, I mean, it is vinyl. Uh, maybe if you wiped it down, you know, you might be able to get into a really good, you know, really good shape. It's a very thin vinyl, um, but I think it's because of its age. I mean, I, it's it's just that's the way the vinyl was. It's not like a super heavy duty piece of vinyl as you would get today. It's just it's just that Santa face is just too much. Like that, I would say that this again, this is fifties, just based on that um, design. Um, it's a great. It's a great, cool, very large vintage Christmas tablecloth. And you can have it, it just fell to the ground. You can have it for $9, $9 for the vintage tablecloth. Give me number 46. Number 46 is $9 for the vintage tablecloth. And then catching up in the chat. So number three, the boomerang shaped dish went to Pete's repeats. And 62, the uh, Poland um, dish, uh, the Poland ornaments, Santa Land box went to Lori C. Congratulations, Lori. And Pete's Repeats, congratulations. Again, I think this might be your first time buying from us. So just don't forget to send us an email with your shipping address uh, so we know how to, how to reach you. All right. The next one I mentioned, I actually tipped my hand earlier. I grew up on Precious Moments. Now, I did not grow up on this Precious Moment. Uh, this one is dated 1995. But it's just a very small, and it's like there's nothing holding this plate in. So I'm trying to, but it's got the original box. I have a feeling the box probably just had a piece of plastic that slid into it. Like we've all seen boxes like that, that just slid into it. And that piece of plastic is missing. So this this is just like resting in this box. So it's got the bundles of joy, precious moments plate. Oh, it comes with a stand. How fun. It just fell out. It comes with a little stand. So it hasn't, it's never been folded. So I don't think this is this has ever been used, but for whatever reason, it, they took away the plastic cover. So it's the bundles of joy in the front. You got the Precious Moments logo on the back, saying it's part of the Precious Moments collection. The date for it is also on the back. Home for the holidays collection. It's just an inexpensive little. Again, for a lot of us, this is probably a flashback to either our childhoods or our kids' childhoods. It's just a cute little Christmas design. Um, that probably most of us remember. And you can get her for four bucks. So the Bundles of Joy plate is $4, giving me number 11. Number 11, $4 for the little um, Precious Moments plate. And number 46, the vinyl tablecloth went to Thrifting Adventures. Excellent. Congratulations, Stephanie. Uh, again, don't forget, uh, Stephanie does her sales on Tuesday nights at um, 8 p.m. Eastern, I think. And then she's also planning a uh, special clothing one. So definitely be on the lookout for that. All right. This is getting into a, a upside down. 
this is getting into there's a, there's some age to this, but this is an unbelievably good condition to the point that I am not sure how old it is. But it's marked Japan. Now it's marked by a company I don't know. It's marked by Maibata Japan. So maybe Maibata is just based in Japan. But it is this great, what I think is a baking dish based on its weight. Amelia just thought it was, you know, uh, chips, you know, for chips and dip, or you know, that's just a it's a display piece. Um, which is, it's entirely possible that's what it is, but it does have a little bit of weight to it. So I'm thinking that you might be able to bake in this, but it doesn't say, it just says my bada Japan on the back. It has the unfinished edges that you might, you would expect in a piece of bakeware of this, of this type. Um, but if you don't want to bake in it, it's most, the decoration is along the edges, which is kind of nice. So if you do use it to just like throw your chips in there, you, you lose the Santa in the middle but you get the great design that's both on the inside and on the outside. So this is something that when I picked it up, I had, I researched the name and it actually was selling for more than I would have thought um, because I wasn't sure how old it was, but it was selling on Etsy. So it's gotta be at least 20 years old. So anyway, this is the Maibata Japan square dish. So you can decide what to do with it and share with us. And it's eight bucks. So $8 for the uh, square dish, $8. You can get it by giving me number two. Number two is $8 for the Maibata Japan dish. And um, to go along with those, I'm selling them separately because again, not everyone is going to, um, not everyone is going to be attracted to both of them. I have the mugs that go with them. The mugs are a little bit lighter weight. Um, so, but they're still marked with that Maibata Japan. They have the gold trim. They've got the same patterns that are on both the inside and the outside of the dish. They're in absolutely pristine condition. Again, I don't think these were ever used. So it's an all white handle, the gold trim at the top, marked Maibata Japan on the bottom. You get both of these because it's not a name that I know, because it's not, I'm not sure how old they are, selling both of the pair, you, the two mugs are only $7 for the pair. $7 for the pair of my, my bottom mugs from Japan. You can get the, those for number eight. Number eight for the pair of my bottom mugs, $7. All right. I'm gonna pull out a box of ornaments again. Sorry, there's a lot of glass ornaments. So I'm hoping some of you, I appreciate the ones that I've already bought so far. So I hope you enjoy the rest of these. Uh, so this one is kind of a weird little marriage that I struggled with. And uh, to be perfectly honest, Rachel had to kind of like walk me off the cliff to figure this one out. So what this box is, is the Christopher Radko Presents Shiny Bright from, the from 2009. The box has a website on it. It's dated 2009. Evidently, Christopher Radko bought out the rights to Shiny Bright and reissued a bunch of ornaments, and they were all made in China. Yeah, handcrafted in China. So everything, you know, anything that's a reproduction Shiny Bright does not have the Made in USA top. So, okay, so I'm looking for Shiny Brights that would fit into this. I found some uh, that were unmarked and discover, and basically we just determined that I had determined that the unmarked ones must be these, that they were just hiding the fact that they were made in China and they, you know, just put them in this box. But then uh, Rachel from Superior Girl Vintage looked at the tops and she's like, eh, I don't think those are the reproduction ones because the tops look very different and the tops look much older than 2009. And you can see they don't match. So what this is, it's a marriage. I have the Christopher Radko Shiny Bright box, which there's evidently, based online, there's a value to that by itself because it is a cool, it's a cool looking box. You know, you can make displays. People have turned these into like little vignettes all by themselves. It's kind of cool. But anyway, so you get the Christopher Radko box that say Shiny Bright, but what you get inside are six unmarked ornaments. Now, looking at them, you can tell there's a little bit of age to the top of that. Oh, and you also get the Shiny Bright paper. Now, I think this is the shiny bright paper from the reproduction because that little shiny bright logo there 
matches the shiny bright logo there. So I have a feeling, and the paper is in too good a condition to be 50 years old. So I think this is the reproduction, but you get a six, you get seven pieces of tissue that match these. Okay, so you get the tissue. So then you get this ornament, which I think I found examples of that. They called it a stencil design. And that's, and Rachel concurred with that. So the stencil is a thing in and of itself, but they're unmarked. This one is just a, a stripe, but it's got kind of a floral starburst type design and kind of barely tell on that middle section. It's kind of a white on white. This one to me is the one that looks newest of all of them that it's hand painted, but she felt that this was actually an older one. So again, from the top, she was, I was amazed. She tried it. She taught me a lot and I still don't know anything, but she taught me like the looking at the top suddenly was a much bigger deal than I ever realized. This one also, I think was fell into this, the uh, silhouette or stencil, I'm sorry, stencil category. Uh, this is a bright red with the glitter. This one is hand painted with the cherries on it, but this is just on one side. So the back side is just kind of the, it's the silver ball. So that's been just painted on the one side. And then this one clearly went along with the red one. It's just the gold version of it with the, the glittery, you know, little grapes. This one does have a little bit of uh, the glitter loss on the leaves. So that one, it seemed like the green just didn't take as well on that paint as it did on this one. Cause I'm sure they're the same age. So this one just didn't, there's a little bit of paint loss on it. So anyway, so you get the Christopher Radko box and tissue paper with the six large ornaments. And all of those are available for $20. So $20 for that full set. And you can get it by giving me number 58. Number 58, $20 for the box with the large ornaments inside. All right. Going to another set of ornaments. These are probably a little bit more run of the mill. Uh, so we have slightly lower price point on them. Basically what this collection turned into was these were the ornaments that didn't have any other home. And so I was trying to make sets and try and make sense to try and sell them. So I didn't have 85,000 lots of ornaments to sell. So what this one became was kind of like a little miscellaneous lot that this is, according to Rachel, this was bothering me. This one is also considered a jewel bright. I have more jewel brights of a different style coming up. And so that's what I'm thrown by. But she said, this is a jewel bright as well. So it's got the plastic casing like kind of with the mirrored finish on it with the little deer on the inside. You can see there's a little bit of a loss to the flash uh, reflection there on the, on the edge. Then this one was the possibility it was the bell that was supposed to hang in that foil piece, but it didn't match the other one and it had its own hook. So I decided that this probably didn't belong. I think it's just a plastic, but it's a very, it's a hard enough plastic that the bell rings it. Um, it's one of those cases that I don't think it's glass, but I really don't want to test it because I don't want to have to break it. And then this one is just a simple, it's like a little Amish, uh, carton buggy snow scene, you know, pretty, pretty run of the mill. Um, the value is really in that jewel bright. So you get the, all three of those ornaments are available for $6 and you get them by giving me number 41. Number 41 is $6 for the jewel bright plus the two bonus ornaments to go along with it. Oh, Barb, Barb J, uh, so Barb JM says she's never seen a jewel bright before. I've actually seen that reindeer one, which is why it was bothering me. Cause I'm like, if I've seen it, it can't, it, you know, it had to have been fairly prominent because we didn't, we were not like a big art, you know, cutting edge family growing up. Our Christmas tree was made out of paper. Um, so, I had seen those before, but what I had not seen before was what also is considered jewel brights. And so that's what I'll show next since I was just talking about jewel brights. Um, so the Radco box with the six unmarked ornaments went to Suzanne McLean. The square baking dish went to Margaret Johnson and the reindeer plus the two ornaments also went to Suzanne McLean. So okay, congratulations. So we've got these jewel brights 
which these I found pretty pretty prevalent that this is kind of like more of a common version of Jewel Bright because it was Rachel that told me that Reindeer was, was a Jewel Bright and I could not find him. I could not find an example of him, but I found all kinds of examples of these. So you've got a Jewel Bright, they're, they're plastic. These are not glass anymore, so these are plastic. This one is a two piece plastic that is now encasing a snowman. You can kind of see he's attached on the back with, you know, some like a little bottle brush tree thing at the bottom kind of holding him in place. We've got a snowman. We've got an elf with a piece of mistletoe or whatever coming out of his legs. We're just going to leave that alone. Um, we've got a church with the greenery underneath it. And that's kind of, that has a red backing. Uh, well, they kind of all have a reddish pink backing, but this one is truly pink. The others are like more of a reddish pink. And then this one, there's a set of four and the hook's caught on the box. Hold on. Ah, okay. This one has a gold backing and this one is another elf with a tree coming out of his pants. So, okay. So we've got four of these jewel brights and they are available as a set of four for $10. And you get them by giving me number seven. So number seven is $10 for the set of four Jewel Brights. All right. These are now the oldest ornaments in the collection. And thanks to Rachel, because it, as you know, I'm trusty huckster. I do not want to try and take advantage or do anything wrong as we were photographing these back and forth because she lives nowhere near me, we were taking a picture of this one and I took a picture and she looked at it and she said there was a tiny chip underneath that cap. So hopefully you can see that. Sorry. There's something bigger to... So you can see there's this tiny, tiny chip. I had not seen it. And so when we were photographing these and I was trying to find out like how to combine them and what to do, these three ornaments are all marked Germany, which means they are pre-World War II. Um, I don't, they might be pre-World War I, but I, I have no way of verifying that. But the ones after that are West Germany and I actually have one of those. These three are all uh, marked Germany. So this is a very large indent. And you see it's got a fairly deep indent and it also has the extension on the bottom. So this one is obviously fairly fragile and it had a little bit of damage at the very top. There's also a tiny all silver one that has kind of like a blue arch spray that kind of comes just on the top half of it, just on the front. So it's like a little bit more like a mercury glass one. And the third one is elongated and has the blue design to it with the silver. So you can see like all of these definitely are showing their age. They're a great condition in the sense that other than that tiny minuscule little chip right underneath the cap, these are in great condition. There's no chips or cracks. There's nothing that shows visibly, but because of that, it affected the price. So we seriously had to reduce how much these were worth um, because of that tiny little chip. So, all three of these are the German ornaments, the large indent plus the two smaller ones. Now, because of that damage as a set of three, uh, they're valued at $12. And you can get the three ornaments from Germany, $12 for number 28. So number 28, $12. All right. Now they were not marked Fred Gile, Finney. So I think it, uh, they're, they're definitely German, not Italian. All right, moving away from in, from ornaments for a second, but not for very long because I don't have too many other things. I've only got four items left. So these had been on my Etsy shop and just hadn't sold. So I was looking for, again, some, some variety uh, for the sale because I knew I was going to have all those glass ornaments. I wanted to mix things up a little bit. I pulled them out. And so you've got two carolers. One in the red robe and one in the blue robe. They're in absolutely great condition. Admittedly, I don't know what they're made out of. They've got a paper covering here. I, I don't think they're plastic, 
but I also don't think they're chalkware. So I mean, they're probably some form of resin or some form of a composite material. I do think there, there's definitely some age to these because this is their original box. And I think that, you know, we're probably talking maybe the eighties, I would think eighties, maybe nineties, um, that we're, we're, we're the 30 to 40 year old, you know, range. I don't know if they're much older than that. They're almost, they're almost in too good of condition to be much older than that, but you can see there's just no paint loss. They're not marked on the bottom at all. And again, you can kind of see this, there, there's this little piece of paper that they use to cover the bottom. There is a hole underneath here. So they were molded. Um, anyway, I just think they're, they're super cute. And for whatever reason, they maybe, because you can't really tell in a little Etsy photo what they are, figured, hey, maybe I'll showcase them a little bit better so you guys can see them a little bit better. They're not branded. They're just cool Christmas decorations that clearly fall under the vintage. So you can get the two set, uh, the set of two carolers for $11. And you can get them for giving me number 30, number 30, $11 for the box of two carolers. All right. Got another box of ornaments. This is also somewhat of a mixed bag. I've got these little cheat sheets to keep track of everything. So this one, I, like I had the one box that was not, um, they, they weren't marked at all. So that was like, that was a struggle to try and figure out what they were. These are marked. Well, three of them are, this is a set of four. And it's just kind of an odd match. And so we just, you know, again, working with Rachel, she was great helping me kind of come up with some groups. And so one of them, this one is the one that's marked West Germany. So you know that this one is before 1990-ish, uh, 89, 90. So you definitely have some age on this one. The dots and the star are actually raised. So these are painted onto the glass. So you've got this great little greenish, bluish green, uh, round one with the stars and the dots. So that one is marked West Germany. These two are marked Rausch, R-A-U-C-H, Industries, and it just says Rausch, I-N-D. So these are marked, and there is a following for the Rausch brand, but I only had the two. So there's these two Rausch ornaments, one in the uh, red and one in the green, both with the gold glitter uh, design that's in really good condition all the way around. And then the fourth one is not marked, but I think it's one of the older of the set of four, but it's got kind of the cool look to it again. And if you can see, like there's a little, there, it's not considered an indent, but there's like little indentations as you go around it. So there's like, it's like this, I don't know, drum shape type thing, but then it's got these little lines at an angle that then are painted in between. So it's just, it's a very cool looking piece set of four, you get the four ornaments, four glass, uh, three marked, one not. All four of them you get for this, for three, basically three bucks a piece, $12 for the set of four by giving me number 21. Box of four ornaments, 21, it's $12. <coughs> this stuff is very, dust, very dusty. And yes, that was my coaster sticking my glass. All right. Um, Speaking of coasters, I've got one more set of coasters. It is a set of Pimpernel coasters in two different designs. Admittedly, I'm not sure if these were ever designed to go together or if they were sold individually uh, or like as sets of like one set of Santa and one set of the uh, snowman. I have a feeling they were sold together because when I found these, they're all marked with the Pimpernel uh, sticker on the back. Together, they make a set of six. So if they were sold individually, you would never have a set of three coasters. It'd be a set of four. And each of them was missing one. So I have a feeling, and they were sold to me as a set. I have a feeling this did come together as a set that has both the Santa and the snowman and the snowman motif on both. These are probably, these are Pimpernel, um, but they're made in England, probably in the 90s, um, maybe 80s, but I think based on those graphics, I think these are 90s. Um, very good quality, very good condition. They are cork backed. Pimpernel is one of the better names of, and they all make the, the coasters in the same style and that's what they're known for. And they do hold up. That's why they're, they're, they are collected um, for those who like coasters. It is a name to look out for, but it's six coasters. 
I'm selling them for six bucks. Dollar coaster. So Snowman and the Santa coasters from Pimpernel, six dollars by giving me number six. Number six, six dollars gets you the set of six coasters. Oh, Jackie, that's a new name. Jackie Judas. Hello, Jackie. Uh, welcome. All right, last item. Yes, last item. All right, this is probably one of my favorite um, because again, these are not types of ornaments that I had growing up. So I just like I just like that because this kind of stuff. It's these icicle shaped in these beautiful colors. So we've got this really cool like Kelly green. It's showing up kind of a lighter chartreuse color, but it's really like a Kelly green. It's not emerald. Um, this is like a peacock blue. At least on my screen, this is showing fairly true to its real color. Um, you also have this absolutely gorgeous copper colored one, which I haven't seen before. So you just have this beautiful copper color. And all four of these are marked Poland. So you've also got some age on these. And then this one, I'm not sure was part of the original set. It's still marked Poland, but you can see it's significantly different. It has this swirl design painted onto it, but it still has some of the same colors as the other one. So maybe it was part of the set, but as you can tell, based on all the things that I've gone through, a lot of these are not, like these were kind of a mismatch over time. So this is a set of four of these icicle shaped ornaments, all marked from Poland. They are available for $15 for the set. And for you can get those uh, the four ornaments $15 by giving me number 26. Number 26, $15 gets you the set of four icicle ornaments from Poland. All right, that is my main sale. But as promised, Trusty's Bargain Bin is coming up. We had a request in the chat. If somebody wanted to see the Precious Moments plate again that had not sold. So I will show that really quickly. The Precious Moments plate was bundles of joy. So it's a, a little girl holding a very the tall stack of gifts, her bundles of joy with the pink ribbon and the uh, holly berries around there. Uh, and it is marked on the back that it is from the Precious Moments collection. And it has what I think is the year on it, but I can't read it from that. So I can read it from the box. The box says it was 1995. So that was $4 and that was number 11. So $4 number 11 was the Precious Moments um, plate. All right, and I'm super far behind in the chat, so before people run away, let me grab, hey, Tim. All right, so in the chat, number six, the Santa Snowman Coasters went to Margaret M. Number 21, the set of four uh, West Germany, Roche and Unidentified was, uh, uh, 21 went to Jackie Judas. Number 11, the Precious Moments plate goes to Kim at Oh My Vintage. Number 30, the Caroler figures went to Joanne Barber. Number 28, the German ornaments uh, went to Suzanne McLean. And number 41, the Reindeer Plus Two also went to Suzanne McLean. And I think I had the Foil Christmas stuff also went to Suzanne McLean. Suzanne's going to have fun time at Suzanne's house at the Christmas party. Okay, so we're bringing back the bargain bin. So the bargain bin, for those who have not been here before, Everything in the bargain bin is $2. That's simple enough. So all you're going to get is we're going to do this a little bit faster because that took me longer than it should have because of those glass ornaments. We're going to fly through these. I'm going to show you the item. You'll know it's $2. I will show you a letter. So we're going to mix things up a little bit. I'm going to show you a letter. And uh, as promised, the first thing that we have in the bargain bin is the shiny bright ornaments. So here's the deal. Uh, can you grab me that bag, the big one? Um, so the shiny bright ornaments, I have kind of a mixed bag. They're all literally mixed bag because they're in a bag. They're all marked shiny bright USA. Most, we've got five of them that are going to be the large size. So if you, when you give me a letter, I will just pull these randomly. There'll be a set of, they'll, you'll either get one large one, a pair of two medium sized ones, or the th I have three small ones, these will be considered one. So when you give me a number, the first nine people, yeah, first nine people 
that put the, this letter into the into the um, chat will get one of those just randomly chosen. So it'll be just like the grab bags I've done before. It's uh, you will get uh, the first nine people. And again, to be fair, we're not going to let you do the times five or times six this time. If you want more than one, you need to put your number in once and then hurry up and put another number in. And if you can get more than one in before we run out, I'll give you more than one. Um, so, and there are no duplicates, they're all unique. So they're all shiny brights, they're all made in the USA and you can have one for $2. You can have it by giving me the letter H. So H is the letter to get the shiny bright ornaments for yourself. $2 for a large one, $2 for two of the medium ones or $2 for that one set of three. I will pick them randomly. I'll just lay them out and then just randomly grab. So no requesting please. Uh, and we'll see how many uh, go. So let's see. Uh, yeah, they all went. So <laughs> we will go through and rush. Um, holy cats, I needed more ornaments. Okay, so yeah, so she's gonna go ahead and make the list, watch the chat. Um, she will post the, the nine people that she saw come in first. Because remember, it's what we see, not what you see. You'll see yourself as number one, we have to go with what we see. So she will grab that and she will post that into the chat. Uh, and then I'll try and I will announce all of the winners of the bar bargain bid at the end. Um, so congratulations to all of you who are gonna be successful getting those. I'm glad they were that successful. Um, it was, I figured the most fun way to sell the random things that were kind of left over because they're still shiny, vintage shiny brights. So they're kind of cool. So anyway, so that is the, that is the first one. Uh, the next item I've got in here, this, Actually, there's one more holiday themed, but this is not themed. The theme here is everything's two bucks. There's your theme. So this one is, this is again, probably a product of the 2000s. It's a Laurel Birch bookmark. Actually, is it marked? Oh, look at that, 1991. It's actually older than I thought. So it is a Laurel Birch cat, see, I bring cats, brass bookmark marked Christmas 1991. Now, what makes this a Christmas cat? I do not know uh, because I guess you could turn it. Well, maybe it's an ornament. I thought it was a bookmark. Maybe it's an ornament. She does have a hole in, there, in the back, in her back. I thought it was, I thought the legs, I thought that you kind of split it and turned it into a bookmark, but maybe she's an ornament. Anyway, it comes with the original Laurel Birch uh, folder. It was originally, it looks like that's a Carson Peary Scott tag uh, that was originally selling for $7.99 back in the 90s. So you can get the Laurel Birch, I'm gonna say she's, it's an ornament now. You can get the Laurel Birch, Laurel Birch ornament for $2 as bargain bin by giving me letter P, letter P, $2 for the cat, Laurel Birch cat ornament. All right, the next item is a piece of random California pottery ware that I thought would be a good addition to the bargain bin. It's a piece of orchard ware uh, hand decorated, made in California. It's marked Orchard Ware on the back. It is in great shape, no chips, no cracks. What I really like about it, you maybe kind of see it, these dogwoods are actually raised up. So they're not just painted onto the pottery, it's actually raised up. Uh, and I said pottery, but this is, yeah, this is, this is, this is ceramic, this is pottery. Um, because there are stilt marks. See, that's how you can tell porcelain from pottery. Look for the stilt marks. Um, it's it's not just painted onto it. It's raised into that. And I just think that's kind of cool. And it's it's uh, probably the bread and butter plate. It's, um, got my tape measure here. It is six and three quarters inches across. So probably the bed, maybe the bread and butter plate. Uh, anyway, it's $2 for the very cool dogwood uh, California pottery. Give me a letter Y. Letter Y for the orchard wear from California. Uh, this is a piece I picked up as a uh, as a lot, um, which came from, um, at some point I'll show you all the coasters I got, but this came in the set of coasters. It is not a coaster. It is actually Crooksville, China, which I did a little bit of digging and I found some information on Crooksville, um, Crooksville, China. But I did not find this. I have a feeling that Crooksville was the blank and somebody painted this. And if you're into the naive painting, this is right up your alley. Um, this was somebody who being trained or trying, like just practicing. And then what they did was they use, I think there is some age to this because what they used was some sort of a overcoat 
or a glaze to cover what they painted and it's discolored over the years. So you've got the white, which should have blended into the white background, you know, it has, has kind of discolored a little bit over the year. And what I think is most, uh, most adorable about this is how naive that border was clearly, it was clearly painted by hand to make that circle, bless their little hearts. They, <laughs> they did the best they could. Uh, I just think, I think it's quaint. It's not a lot of value, so it's in the bargain bin. It's two bucks. And so it's kind of a cool little item to have. Looking not nautical, if you're looking for nautical, Vinny. But anyway, it's kind of cool. $2 Crooksville China plate. You can have it by giving me letter X. Letter X gets you the hand-painted Crooksville China plate. All right. Going to move into some tin. Uh, anybody who's followed my channels before, whether you've watched some of my videos, you, whether you've watched my sales, I have a lot of tin. I did this, I started my resale business primarily selling props that I had left over at set dressing from doing theater. Tin looks great on stage because it looks like porcelain, but it's metal, so it doesn't break and that hurt. Um, so anyway, this is a very simple red background bowl with the floral design. It is got the same copyright as almost all the Daher pieces of 1971. Daher changed names in 1982. So by definition, if you have a piece of tin that is marked Daher, it's by definition older than 1982. So you're clearly in the vintage era. This is a fairly standard floral motif that they had available. And this one is available for $2. $2 for the nine inch bowl by giving me letter E. $2 letter E gets you the the tin bowl and yeah there's that was a big echo vinny as <laughs> a hit hit my head and i'll just keep keep clanging all right another uh piece of uh porcelain so this is a porcelain no stilt marks on the back uh, i was made uh made in japan it's it's had a rough life as you know i don't tend to like to carry things with damage or condition issues but this motif i think actually the the weathering actually adds to it because it is a very you know, it's it's a it's a desert scene. It's got the camel. It's got the tent city. It's got the oasis uh, palm trees in it. The fact that it has some paint loss and some scuffing to the paint, it's not something that I would put into my collection, which is why I'm selling it. Um, but it doesn't bother me as much that this has a little bit of paint loss. And as Vinny has always said, if you have something that already starts with damage, you don't have to worry about damaging it yourself. So I don't really call it damage. It's just, it's showing some wear. There are no chips. There are no cracks. The, the, the plate is actually in absolutely pristine condition. It's simply that I have a feeling it may have been stored for a while with another plate sitting on top of it, which is one of the worst things you can do with porcelain, hand-painted porcelain. So I think it kind of rocked across. But what's nice is the raised gold, this is actually Moriage, is actually in still pretty good condition, which is why I think the wear was like where the plate sat on the other plate. It didn't rub off on the edges because it probably didn't touch the other edges. Regardless, talking too much for something I'm selling for $2. So $2 for the uh, camel and uh, Oasis plate by giving me letter U. Letter U, $2 for the made in Japan plate. All right. Uh, similar, this is a piece that I debated what to do with them. So technically what I'm doing is I'm selling you the pristine version of a salt shaker or maybe pepper shaker, whatever you'd like to do with it. And as a bonus, you get the other one that actually has a tiny, tiny chip right out of the foot. But because of that tiny, tiny chip, you get this one. Basically, this is $2 and this is free or it's $2 for the pair, however you want to look at it. If you only want the one, you don't want to pay for shipping for both, I'll just ship you the one. That's fine. This one will go to Goodwill. Uh, this one is in perfect shape. This one is not. Kind of a cool design, a uh, cool shape. These are not marked. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know what they are. To me, I've seen glass versions of this made by Avon, but Avon didn't trademark the shape. So I don't know if these are Avon. These are ceramic. Those are not glass. And they are ceramic because there are still marks. Um, Perfect condition, a little tiny, tiny chip, $2 for the pair by giving me letter R. Letter R, $2 for the tiny, for the salt and pepper shakers. All right, these are salt and pepper shakers, same deal. 
these I picked up from George. Unfortunately, he I don't think he realized there was damage to them. And I certainly didn't or I wouldn't have bought them. So for right now, you get a perfect form salt and pepper shaker or salt or no, he's the pepper shaker. Absolutely perfect condition. You're getting him for $2. I will throw in for free the one that had the salt shaker that had the leg chopped off. So it has been glued on, but unfortunately there is some serious damage to that. So if you're into singles, you get a great looking cow for two bucks. If you're happy to turn one to its side so you can't tell that there's damage to it, you get a really good deal. You get both of them. It's still two bucks. So the pair of cows you get for giving me letter M as in mouse. So M gets you the salt and pepper shakers. All right. One more Christmas item. This originally was designed to be going into my regular sale uh, because they're coasters. Unfortunately, when I, I got them, I, I bought them with one of the good looking uh, coasters sitting on top. And this is where you, you, you learn the lesson of you need to kind of pay closer attention to what you're buying. Um, this one is in perfect condition, but they're that heavy grade paper. Some of the other ones did not fare so well. So this one has a little bit, it looks like some wine stains to it. This one has a little bit of a mark to it. There's a couple of them that just, they, there's a, it's a, actually a very large set. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's a set of 12. So it's a very large set. It's just, they're not all in pristine condition. Uh, and since they're only paper, I mean, they're really not designed to be heavy duty use. So it's for holiday. I said, you know what? I got them at a decent enough price that I'll just pass it on and say they're two bucks. So you get them, you can probably pull out probably about six of them are in pristine condition and whatever, otherwise use all 12, whatever the case, $2 for the set of 12 coasters made by Lolita, funnily enough. And they originally sold from Venice stationers for $10. So $2 for the set of 12 coasters by giving me a letter D as in dog. All right. Got another piece of porcelain. This is a Bayreuther Wald, Waldsassen in Bavaria. So it's Bavarian German. It is a, a pair of birds. It says they are Orioles. So you got this pair of birds. It's in really good, it, there's no chips, there's no cracks, but you can see there's a little bit of wear to the gold. So there, this, this again, this has some age to it. This is, this is a vintage piece. Uh, unfortunately, the gold has not uh, weathered as well. Bayer Ruther is actually a very good brand of porcelain. Um, unfortunately, the gold just has worn off. So because of that, I'm passing them on just for two bucks. So it's two dollars. Yes, Nicole, they are. We got some birdies finally. I think this might be the bir first birds I've had tonight. So two dollars for the birdie cup from from uh, from Bayer Ruther by giving me letter J. J for jam for the Orioles porcelain mug. All right, last item. I've been holding on to this practically since the month I opened my shop because I keep mysteriously hoping someone will know what it is. So I'm closing out my bargain bin with a $2 item that I don't know what it is. And I'm hoping you guys will be able to educate me. It is a piece of lacquer ware that is footed. You can see there's kind of like there's little raised feet on it. It's a black base with this blue cover with a very glitzy gold and silver trim to it that comes off to reveal a receptacle of some sort. It's not very tall. You know, we're only talking a couple of inches tall there. It's lacquer, so maybe it could hold water, but I don't think it's a vase. It could definitely hold an air plant. Of course, then what are you gonna do with this? I tried to see, like you can technically put this upside down and it sits on there. But again, what do you do with it? Because if it tips over or whatever, like you, like, what would you do with it? The closest anyone came to me is it was a um, lipstick holder. But I don't know why you would need a vanity holder to hold one tube of lipstick. So somebody, is, and I thought maybe an inkwell too, but this is not a, airtight lid and I'm afraid I would think the ink would probably evaporate but that was a possibility um incense I'm not sure like would you be able to burn anything with lacquer 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I I've never burned incense. So I, I would be concerned that as it burned, if it touched the lacquer, it would actually set the lacquer on fire. Um, so it's just, it's this very cool little thing. If you would like to figure out what it is or just own something weird for yourself. And yes, Katie, you could put very tiny cubes of cheese in there. Uh, you could definitely use a shot glass. I hadn't considered that. You could actually make that the shot glass. You could have double shots. Uh, so you know what? It's I've just had it long enough. I'm afraid it's going to get broken because it's lacquer. It's not going to like break easily, but I'm afraid it's going to get crushed. So I'm not. I don't know who I think is going to miraculously tell me what it is. So it's two dollars. And if you would like the little weird piece for two dollars, you can have it by giving me letter C, letter C for the cheese holder. So that is my evening. That is everything out of the bargain bin. That is everything that I've sold. Uh, wow, that went really long. And Millie warned me, but I want to do this theme. I had a lot of fun stuff I wanted to share. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you got some good stuff. If you got anything tonight, if you if you bought from me recently, it's Amelia takes good notes. It's less less critical. Just watch for your invoice, and uh, she'll be and just make sure that I'm charging you for the right stuff. Um, but if you have never bought from me before, it's very important that within the next either tonight or tomorrow by tomorrow night, please send an email to the email that's running across the bottom and give me your shipping address because I need to calculate the shipping so I can get you the invoice and I need to know where to send it. So there were definitely a couple names tonight that came for the first time. Ooh, a chalk holder. I hadn't thought of that. It can't be anything, couldn't be anything too tall to tip it over. That, that, that probably could pick a couple of pieces of chalk in there. But anyway, send me your email with your uh, shipping information. I really appreciate it. Watch uh, if you're interested in the, the uh, shiny bright UFO and double indents and the specialty pieces, make sure to check out my eBay page and you too can be lucky like Randy Heilman and get uh, pick up one of the pieces. This The auction will end before the sale starts next week. And re speaking of sales, for those of you who are still here, so tomorrow, Friday always has Alex from Chapter 2 Vintage Co. You catch her at 1 p.m. At 8 p.m. is Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage. He will be having a sale. And then at 10 p.m. will be uh, Fatbird Finds will be having their uh, thrifting and flipping and sipping. And they've started doing a new thing where they actually sell five items during the flipping and sipping. So you get a sale at their um, event as well. Saturday, there are two sales that I wrote down. Uh, and lost um, that are 3 p.m. is Thrill of the Thrift. I don't know if Dee was on here earlier. I don't know if she's still here. Uh, 3 p.m. is Thrill of the Thrift. 8 p.m. is Pamela Blanchard, which admittedly is a name new to me. So I think she did her first sale last week or the week before. Um, so Pamela Blanchard, so watch uh, some of the calendars to get that. 6 p.m. on Sunday, Mimi's uh, Cindy from Mimi's Treasure Cottage is doing her sale. And then Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern will be my vintage deep dive with Julaine Sullivan of All Dressed Up. She'll be talking about vintage clothing, specifically clothing of the 50s. So she's going to be referencing everything to Mrs. Maisel. She'll be talking about silhouettes. She'll be talking about labels. She'll be talking about what you can find in the wild when you're out shopping and thrifting, uh, what to typically be on the lookout for. And it should be a lot of fun. She directed me in my the third show I ever did. The only show that the Huckster Helper and I ever did together. Um, she was the director. So she runs the, uh, runs a costume shop and she should be a, it should be a great time. Uh, so that is Sunday at 8 p.m. I see Michelle from Cozy Comfy, Livi Comfy Cozy Living is here. Don't forget her sales are Thursday during the day. So you missed her Christmas sale today, but check her out next Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern. And then I'll be back next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I'm sure I'm missing some others. I think I mentioned Stephanie's. Anyway, hopefully we can convince Vinny to come back and do a live sale. And next week, my live sale will be the 4S1S, four sellers, one sale. So next week, a week from tonight, is George from the Antique Nomad, Kelly from Moss Stone Story Vintage, and Tim from over the years. Sorry, Tim, didn't even forget you. And over the years, this will be his first sale. So it has now turned out three months in a row. I am putting somebody into my live sale that has, uh, that it will be their first sale. So Tim's very first sale uh, will be next, next week as part of the group sale. And he has already announced he will be starting weekly sales of his own after that. And if you don't follow his channel, he's a lot of fun. He's a great expert on glass. He was in my last deep dive on uranium glass. So 
All right, that's enough for the night. My throat's getting dry. Amelia's giving me looks, so we are done. Thanks again for joining me. Oh, I need to announce who won everything. The grab bag ornaments went to, if you're all still here, Carolyn Gatles, Suzanne McLean, Stacy Brinkley, Lori C., Karen Radford, Dong Schunkweiler, Vintage, Katie Vintage and Vinyl, Tina B., and Gabby White. Uh, P, see, now I don't know what these what these letters were for. Oh, the, okay, the cat ornament went to Suzanne McLean. The uh, the orchard ware plate went to Carolyn Gatles. The uh, the crooks the Crooksville uh, nautical plate went to Gabby White. The red tin uh, the Daher tin went to Joanne Peterman. The uh, camel uh, plate went to Gabby White. The salt and pepper the red white salt and pepper shakers went to Laura Bemos. The cow salt and pepper shakers went to Carolyn Gatles. The uh, holiday coasters went to Karen Radford. The Bavarian bird mug went to Barb J.M. And the mystery lacquer piece went to Karen Dondelinger. So congratulations. I think that wiped out everything I had in the bargain bin. If there was anything that you might have seen earlier that did not sell, um, and you want to see again, just drop me an email. And I can send you a picture of it and answer, answer any questions on it. Um, but uh, hope, I think most of the glass ornaments sold. So it was, it was a mixed bag tonight. So appreciate everyone being with me particularly since there was so much competition tonight. I appreciate all you join. It's quality over quantity. And I really hope you guys had fun. And I had a lot more fun trying to follow the chat tonight. And uh, you guys are a fun group. So thanks a lot for supporting me. Thank you for joining my channel. Have a great night. And uh, see you again, uh, hopefully on Sunday. Bye-bye.